like this is the 1950s, 19, 1940s, like America kind of thing. Where it's right. like, yo, fuck it. Bad things happen. And so what? Ah, we don't need to fix it. We just need to make sure the machine keeps on working. We don't need to upgrade the parts. You know what I mean? It's good. It was better than it was for my dad. And it's good enough for my kids. We don't need to change anything. This can keep on working. Whereas when you get to the point where it's idealism, that's that Reaganomics level where it's like, yo, hey, look, as long as we're rich, everyone else will be rich and will work. It'll work. And now we've kind of reached, like I said, the idealism temper with realism. Like, no, I want people to be good, but I recognize there's bad people. Right. And I think, like I said, when you talked about earlier, it's like the parents pretty much were like, okay, we want this, this and that to be make sure that our kids and the future are good and all of that such. I think it's the kids now where they're like, I'm glad that you did that, but I'm not really cool with the path the way of the way you got here. You know what I'm saying? I think of this yeah. generation, the kids of the last generation are very more, more, have more, I guess, more compassion for the other man, I would say. And just, because I don't know. It's just, we've seen a lot of fuck shit throughout of our, you know what I'm saying, of that 20th century, that going into the 21st century, it was just kind of like the unwinding time now. All right, let's try to get all of that crazy shit that we learned from then and try to, like, make sense of it now and see, all right, this made sense, that didn't make sense. All right, that was wrong. This was okay. This can stay. That was just some dude was off his Richter scale when he made that law. Like, a lot of that, I feel like a lot of that shit is happening right now. And I think prison is one of the things that's coming into the conversation because you'll see films like, you yeah, know me, I always go back to films when you reference shit for time period, but you go back to things like Shawshank Redemption, right? And just think about how just that era of prison was like, or even Green think of- Mile. Like, The Green, Green Mile. Mile is another one. With that's Death Row. A little bit too fantasy for me, but I'm with you though. I'm with you though. But um, even when you think of like just an old San Quentin or old motherfucking Cabrini Green, or not Cabrini Green. Um, what's um, Chicago's prison called? Okay, I'm blanking right now. But um, but yeah, but just like old school prison from the 20th century and how a lot of like shit went down during then compared to how a lot of reforms and just just the style of prison. Like we went in the in the 90s. Would you ever think about seeing a prisoner on motherfucking Facebook Live, bro? Like just the no. fact that that is an no. option now is like some may call the reform. Some may say it's just there's. Just, you know what I'm saying? Do some crazy people shit. But people think now, like, with society, they think prison is, like, rehabilitation, but they don't think that shit no more. Like, if it was rehabilitation, they would have more resources. They don't got that no more. They, they don't... It's not... You go to a psych ward for rehabilitation now. You don't go to prison. I mean, I'll be real. I don't wouldn't have want my prisoners to get rehabilitation in uh, a prison. To be real. That's not the ideal... What if it's a nonviolent offense? Right, but if it's a nine-violent offense, he shouldn't be in prison. He should be in rehabilitation. Just but we don't make that decision, bro. Right, no, no, no. I understand that. What I'm saying is what you said was right, where it's like, look, hey, these people need to see certain psychologists. These need to see people with mental health issues. There's a lot of a lot of crime is, is spurred by the fact that there's out, outstanding issues in their life beforehand. And usually, like, they've done the studies in Europe. They've done the studies in certain towns and cities in the United States as well. Where it's hey, as long as you address these out these precursor issues, this person will never be a criminal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's very very weird when this is like, like I tell you guys, like my generation and the generation ab uh, above me, the they're just getting into politics. The people in their thirties, the people in their forties, and it's like. Y'all, once y'all really hit the pol political wave, and it's like, look, the boom, the boomer doomers are gone. The, the, that that they're gone, right? That's that Dick Cheney era, um, John McCain era. Like, those are people who are dying in office. They're, those guys are gonna be gone. Then it's gonna be the kids who are like, who were twenties in their Reaganomics, who seen how bad the government really can be when it's allowed to go crazy. And well, you know that information is more. They're more privy to that information now. Right, and they're more red now, like, okay, things are fucked up. Mm -hmm. And then that generation that's behind us are pretty much looking like, yo, oh, Damn, now we, gotta come in. we gotta fix this now. And mm -hmm. everyone now is kind of like just looking at the doomers, like, yo, y'all old people just... Y'all let it go to shit. Yeah, it's, 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 like, it's like, damn, what did you do? We're living in it now, having to experience it and kind of like figure it on the way. And like you said, the, the ones that's coming up next is like, Yo, we're getting, we're about to try to nip a lot of this shit in the butt now before we even got to experience it. 
Gino, do you think, and I'm going to ask Gino specifically this question because he has kids. Um, Gino, do you think we're going to see some changes while in this current generation or in your kids' generation or in your Oh, I think in this generation. I honestly think by the time I'm, before I'm 40, there'll be massive changes. Like, just think about like this. So sooner. That's all. 2008. Listen, but from 2008, right? If you were born after 2008, you've only known a black and white person. Mm -hmm. If you were born before 2008, you've been through like, a ringer. You, you, white, seen, white, 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 white. <laughs> you've seen essentially. Just hear me out. We've seen like the voting, the voting actual, the actual voting power of the people. Where it's like, no, we're getting rid of all these Caucasians and we're putting minorities in these positions. Mm -hmm. And it sounds weird, but it's like, yo, Congress has become more diversified now. There's more women in there. There's yeah. more, there's more people, not even just women, but people of color in general. Mm -hmm. Colored right. people. Sure. Uh, there's a, there's a, sure. Um, I like calling them colored people. Sure. Right? <laughs> we can call people of color. I'm, I'm calling no, I'm saying it sounds like, a lot better than POCs. Like, I, just hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Right, shout out to the we got, we got Latinx. I don't like yeah. Latinx. Don't call me that's, no Latinx. That's white people. Dude. That's white people. Latinx. White don't people call me no people. Latinx. That's how, like, white people are the people from team. Spain. That's it. That's it. Only I call people from Spain Latinx. That's like, just how I go. Y'all not Latinos. Y'all not Do not tener la, la, la raza. You, do not tener sazón. Yeah, exactly. It's like you traveled here to get that. That's a, that's an Y'all don't have that out there, bro. I seen what y'all eat, and I'm not impressed. Go you know Latinx I mean? sounds like underground. Like we the reason why rice and beans taste better. And look at the other one. Latinx. Let's scale. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Let Yo, Latinx sounds like a racial slur in my opinion. But it do. Like that shit. Yo, it feel, it feel bad. Like, yo, whoa, whoa, whoa. We speak Spanish, bro. We don't end things with that X like that. That's wild. <laughs> I can hear it in the That's episode wild. of the panel. I ain't gonna feel bro. I ain't gonna lie. Latinx sound like you just had like a, a Spanish dude cosplaying as Malcolm X for Halloween. Who are like, you, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Latinx sounds like honestly, it sounds like a, a like a like a, like, nice, stupid, like a 99 cent store me that's orientated. Me 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 Yo, welcome to Get Your Barlow Podcast. We in our bag early. We in our bag early, man. Oh, oh, boy, Gino back. Man. Yo, we on, back, on, man. We back at it like a craftmatic, whatever it looks be saying or some shit like that. Bro, back at it like a crack at it. Don't disrespect, beloved. I thought you said craft. It's been too long. It's been too long since we got into chill. I feel like, like the I'm, last I'm time we saw you was in, 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 you know what I'm saying? You was in. Oh, I was lit. lit. I was lit. Yeah. yeah. That was was that Christmas? Was that Christmas? Or that New was New Year's. New Year's. New Year's yeah. yeah. It's been a while, bro. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I feel like we would have caught you on Christmas like that. You would probably just been calling us all type of like pagan holidays, worshippers, or some shit like oh, that. He would have had the Umar video. What's going on, Eric? You fucking cat. Jank, Jank watching UFC <laughs> right now. But Yo, oh yeah, bro, I want to watch UFC too. But yeah, I'm, I gotta, I'm, gonna, I'm doing this for a little there. bit, and then like I'm gonna catch that on the free site. Oh yeah, Dana White. Yes, I'm Dino gonna, gonna do a Rick Ross. He's gonna be like, "Yo, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bro." Oh man, oh man. All right, man. Let's 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 start this shit off, man. I got to finish typing in the rest, but the first one I got up. So we are coming off um some wrestling of the week. We already had AW Dynamite and um. And what's it called? Rampage this Friday. We had SmackDown Friday, all that good stuff. Um, but coming off Wednesday, we had Cody come back with a, a really, uh, I'd say mixed promo, in my opinion. I feel some people really, really like it, and some people are not really crazy about that it. That nigga desperate. Um, but we uh, let me see if I can actually pull it up. So I, I hate really just trying to reference people's shit. I'm not going to hold you. That nigga desperate. That nigga desperate. Like, wait, wait, I'll be real. Like, like just while but, you pull it up, I'll, I'll get this out uh -huh. of the way. AEW is really starting to irk me. I'm, I already, I told myself this year that I'm not watching AEW until the What you think of Jay Cargill as champion? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I said, I'm not watching AEW in its entirety. I watch certain select parts. But mm -hmm. There's no like I'll be real, the young bucks don't move the needle. They haven't moved me in a minute. 
right? Maybe. And it's John, like Cody. Cody's problem is Cody is not giving us the Cody that built AEW, that got AEW where it's at. Because as mm-hmm. much as Kenny Omega was, as much as the Young Bucks was, it was it was Cody. Nah, Cody, Cody can it, he's been cooking in the ring. It's just his character. No, no, period. I'm talk, yeah, I'm talking about his character. His character, because in the ring, he he can still go. Right, and it just it just kind of turned into like, where Find it was. Your perfect freelancer. On you that. Don't Red, it. Dog. You gotta mute that I one. Got yeah. yeah, I got you. I got you. But nah, like it you. just he <laughs> Cody demonetized. <laughs> All right, oh here we go. Yeah, play play this a uh, Travis Steve. Oh wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna put you onto a chip. Pick up the speed. Go to oh, the, yeah, um, yeah, 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 the yeah, yeah. settings. Pick up the I, speed. I forget they AW be on their little weird shit sometimes. There you go. Yeah. Gino be knowing, man. Now he told us this before. I remember. Remember saying this shit. Um, Go ahead, pick up, pick up the I mean, did from that last match about a man who once sat on stage just like that, looked in a ring just like this. That tattoo is fucking horrible. It's, ugly as shit. it's really nasty. In the history it's very proud boys of him. It inspired oh, yeah, it's like he's pretty much set himself up where millions of fans, a black wrestler who pinned him, is a revolution. Be. I am talking about. CM Punk and the pipe bomb. Pause, first it, pause, it, pause, it, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. Someone pause told it. first reference. First reference. <laughs> and this is where I was getting to. It's Cody ain't shit without WWE, and he's starting to make it clear. Well, hold on, hold on. Let me let's let at least finish that point. I like that. I, think, I like I think, that. I think how he did circle it back to AW did make sense. Told me to say yeah, this promo, but I honestly don't know if I'm gonna get the chance. Or I mean, it right was now. truth though. I will give it. A, it was true. In that interview, that that was the first list. whiff of a revolution. He laid out a first whiff. Of whiff. He sounded like his father. Things that for him, the road. like me, were taboo at the time. Things like going to New Japan Pro Wrestling, working with Ring New Hon. Japan Pro Wrestling, and ultimately. I remember from the CM Punk promo, he did bring up New Japan. He did bring up Ring of Honor and the Unpipe Bomb promo and such. Michael with the Young Bucks. <laughs> he did that shit. As destiny <laughs> would have it. As fate would, would have, have it. it. Have it. He was unable to do those things. Yeah, have it. But he would join. Cody and CM Punk feud would be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it won't Shut be. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> he would eventually wind Just up here the alone, in what Pro Wrestling Illustrated called the comeback of the year. But if we're being honest with one another, and I see all the CM Punk shirts, it is the comeback of the decade. We are all living it. We are all loving it. Edges, what the fuck? I'm not even front. Pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. Pause it. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be honest. As much as we I think you're reaching, Gino. No, 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 I'll be real. There's a difference between being told you can never wrestle again because your neck is broken and hitting us with the Shawn Michaels, I've lost my smile, so I'm going home. I mean, if that's the case, then that's why I'm saying Bryan. that. No, no, Daniel, Daniel Bryan. But Daniel Bryan wasn't gone for like almost a decade. I mean, that's he not his go- fault. How he, did, did, he, went, he went to get answers quicker. No, no, I'm saying Edge was – he. Didn't, it wasn't that Edge didn't go to get answers. It's that he kept on getting told no by multiple people. Like, bro, you need to wait to hear. This nigga Edge to record his own shot. That's all he did. Right, I, I'm not really remembering him going to too many outside opinionated doctors. I remember him kind of sticking with, like, a lot of the WWE opinionated doctors because that was the thing with – with Brian, he went outside of the WWE bubble to get checked, and as soon as he did, niggas was like, "Oh no, you all right, bro?" <laughs> yeah, yeah didn't so, he pray Stone Cold. Yeah, Stone Cold yeah. pray. No, 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 because what Stone Cold did was tell him go get a second opinion. Mm-hmm. That's what it was, yeah. and he did get a second opinion, and the second opinion confirmed what the first guy said, which was your neck is fucked. Didn't well, he uh, then then, because then, of the second opinion? No, what he did was waited longer to heal and then go back and get checked up again. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point. Is that you Ooh. need time to heal. So people aren't getting so that's why I'm saying, like when you're saying like edge. Edge had a lot of time to heal. Fuck your yeah, team. Edge, yeah, edge because wrestled he, in 2010. Because he destroyed his fucking neck. His shit bro, was done. You gotta think about it, bro. Brian, you meant like like Brian you gotta, been wrestling just as long as Edge, bro. Dude, you gotta remember how big Edge had gotten 
I get you that, but and then the next time you saw Edge, Edge was small as shit. Like I'm not, I'm talking like within a year after him leaving WWE, Edge got small. That's not, let's not act like all of Edge's matches since his comeback have been fired. They haven't. They, have, they haven't. But that he did a nice, his nice. I'll say his first six months was fire. Six months. Let's think about think about what he did when he came back. He came back. He won the rumble. Then he said, no, 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 Edge. Edge came he back. Win the rumble when he came back, he was in the rumble. I just said he came back for the rumble. Yeah, he was in the rumble. You said he won the rumble. No, I said he, he came back. For, after. He came back for the rumble. Then he sat on the sidelines for the Daniel Bryan and Roman Rum, uh, Reigns feud. In, well, because remember he was already supposed to have a Mania match. Then added himself into that shit where he really wasn't like. What made it that part of him being kind of like interesting because it was like, all right, he coming as the baby face. But then he seen the shit with Brian Danielson and he's like, oh, no, nah, let me show niggas like I don't play that shit. And he started like smoking that nigga, too. You know nigga, did you forget he the, the, the back and everything like the few were Orton? I mean, I can't. It's easy to forget it. That's what I'm saying. Not everything he put out was fire. But they're mm. like, but you got to remember, though, like the first the first initial match that they had. Only thing that that was wrong with it was the timing. It was took the match took entirely too long on the show card. Well, you're hearing it because that's what it was true. Daniel <laughs> Bryan, Daniel Bryan's first match back was what? Him and Shane versus Sammy. Yeah, and that I'll be real. Problem. The whole reason why Daniel Bryan's Bryan's run back was so fire, like his comeback was so fire, was that Miz promo. Where he was shouting at him like, "Go the fuck to the bingo. But you know how many years that was before. That was no, no. That was no, they, that they was a set on it. As soon as he they, came back, they, they jumped right on. They that. set on the. They set Did they? The, the, yes, yeah, they set the Miz versus out. Daniel Bryan. It just they didn't set. work out because no, what you're no, saying, no, though, no. you're still partially right, though. Looks like it, the time in between did it set was a lot. The actual feud because Miz from that time when he until he was on fire. He, he wasn't in WWE championship aspirations anymore. 2016, no. niggas wanted to see that title on Miz. You know what I'm saying? At least by the end of that year, niggas wanted to see the title on that nigga. Yeah, I'll be it real. Matter how long Miz, Miz made the IC probably the most popping belt on SmackDown for he did. he did. Hot he did. He did. That's but that's but if we go like we go to always the natural transition of title um shit, title and championships. When you get when you on that, you kind of hit your ceiling at least for the IC. It's time to reach that next. No, level. but remember what Miz said. He said, "I won't give me this belt, and I'm gonna make it the most relevant belt within a year." And Cody he did said just that. He Cody did said that. No, nah, but Miz. The, I'll tell you this now. Miz held talking, Miz under the bargain. I, I give you that. Like, we're talking about characters in the, 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 the title wrestling. that they were using back. He was the reason why they brought that title back. That white. He's the reason why they had that white belt. That shit was fire. Yeah, he's the reason why they brought it back. Cody. Yeah, huh? no, for oh, the match, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm dashing, I'm dashing, dashing. dashing yeah. yeah, he did bring that title back. Yeah. He, like he was on a run like a motherfucker with that title. But that's but but you're totally right. Like that, I just wanted to give Miz, you, I, yeah. I wanted to give it and this is this is all I'm saying is that edge comeback, people were going crazy off that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Going crazy. Now, listen, as much as everyone wants to hype up the See, the, don't you see? Don't, the, don't wait, do wait, 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 no, wait, no, wait, no, no, no. And people cheer him and hype up. No, listen, listen, it's the same shit. Wait, wait, just hear me out. Hear me out. I know as much as people want to hype up the the CM Punk comeback. The reason why I'm not saying that's the comeback of the year. He's wrestled before that. He's wrestled. He's wrestled, in in between WWE and AEW. Where at? Oh. Not just UFC, but he also has done wrestling. He's done matches where he's dressed up like full body suit, and they knew it was him. Oh, like that like, one, that that's one, not him. Oh, literally, no, that, that was him. That, that, that was, was definitely that was that literally was on the tail end going towards this. Actual no, that was but no, that was like that was a year before he signed. Did that happen? No, that's a like, year before he signed. I mean, well, all I'm saying is, listen, long, listen, bro. listen. <laughs> all I'm saying is, CM Punk flat out said, "I just don't want to wrestle with WWE." I don't want to wrestle pretty much anywhere I've already been. That's been his whole thing. So it wasn't if he it wasn't if he might sign to AEW. It was when he was going to sign to AEW. If they didn't relieve, remember they, Tony Khan announced that he was coming and made sure to set everything up in Chicago. He, it was like 
That was they rolled the, the red crowd. Right. Okay. It was a, you, you're gonna get the crowd pop you want. You're gonna have everyone going crazy. It's gonna you're gonna get all these fan reactions and stuff like that. And all of Edge, Edge, all pop, Edge popping out, bro. Do you not you do you not remember Gene, all the you know, videos? Wait, 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 wait. The element yeah, of surprise. Do you remember all the videos that people were posting on Facebook? It's the element of surprise. And shit like that. Grown people breaking the edge. Oh my god, it's edge. No, the element of surprise. Did not say the same thing. Same thing. I said the same thing on the live podcast. I said the same thing. You I think if I'm not mistaken, Crash said exactly what you said. He did. Niggas was cr- oh yeah, we Bro, it's the element of surprise. I'm saying the element of surprise. Have, they, one of the memes, wrestling memes of the year of the, crying, of, the, of the CM Punk dude crying. Yeah. He in that same elk. He met up with the nigga. He met up with the nigga. Literally, he's in the same category now as Miz Girl, Bailey Girl, and now you got CM Punk Man. Like CM Punk Man. You know, not that for Edge, bro. Like you it's not, I mean, because it's different when CM Punk come around, bro. Like it's not, just bro, I'm not, I'm not, I don't agree. He got I mean, I get why they gave him comeback of the year. I don't agree with it, and I think it, that should have gone to edge, in my opinion. Not just off the strength, the man came back from a broken neck, not because he wanted to just stay home. I mean, who are I, you awards by? Who's the reputable source? PWI. Did they? Yeah. What? What? They gave say what now? Say what now? <laughs> yeah, say what now? Is this the same PWI that has Reigns at number two? Yes, it no, is. Rank, no, don't they have ranks at number one for wrestling? That's Sports Illustrated. That's Sports oh. Illustrated yeah. Who is also a reputable source. Not in wrestling. I wouldn't, I'll be real, having Kenny Omega at number one is wild because Kenny Omega, like, he's talk to him. Talk Kenny to him. Omega. Talk Omega. to him. Let's finish. Let's, let's get back to this promo. Let's, let's get, get back to this promo. <laughs> yeah, it's like the promo. Yeah, I'm gonna be all through about that. Like, yo, can you make a definite <laughs> Let's get back to this promo. I did them. All right, so I carried. So just giving it um, back to what we were saying, he was talking about the the aftermath of the pipe bomb interview. Well, segment or whatever, and the spark that it got into the fans and such like that in the wrestling world, which is true. Like, it kind of got people hyped, like, oh, yo, he's kind of like thinking like us. He's not thinking like the average guy in the WWE bubble. And then pretty much you say he took on that that torch of revolution, which is give or take, because you, I, I got, you got to put the bucks in there too. Every ounce of anti monopoly sentiment on my shoulders, I held every grenade of the revolution in my hand, and each and every one of you cheer. You want to ask he ain't lying. I, he talking that shit. It's because you feared me when I needed the most. When it says there is more than one royal family in wrestling, I am talking about me and all of us. Jesus. I love this nigga on the low, bro. He's people talk about playing chess, bro. He playing chess. This is ROH Cody. Cody. Remember ROH Cody? It's for yeah, yeah, he's for promo. Right. But if you are no, in this no, promo wise, but this ain't the you, same and Cody. You disagree with anything that I say here tonight? You're not a journalist. As this generation likes to say, check the receipts, check the dates. Before there was a forbidden door, I was the one. Who this was fire. This is cap. This, this was fire though. That was cap though. But he wasn't being the elite. They, they started saying that there. Do you remember Taz leaving WWE just to come back to ECW to win the ECW? He's talking about the term Forbidden Door. Oh, no. He's saying he did that already when he start, when he went on the indies and started going to every single that was Hulk promotion. Hogan. Hulk Hogan did that shit with WWE long before that. If we're gonna be oh, I mean, you talk about but, that. But, 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 you know, with no fitting. Yeah, the partner, the partnership like with um, New Japan and shit. That shit back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas been doing the forbidden door. It would just be with select guys. But now it's literally everybody is, is open to everybody now. You know what I'm saying? MLW has an open door. It ain't that forbidden. MLW has an open door. Fucking GCW. Everywhere has an open door policy. Unless you have a black champion, because AEW is not going to work with you. Impact shown. Go ahead, press that play button. You better press that play button. This is sick, man. You just mad Kenny Omega beat Moose, bro. It's okay, bro. Mm-hmm. Niggas, got, niggas got to lose too, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's he okay. Beat Moose. He didn't beat Moose. Then he beat um, uh, no. Rich Swan. Rich Swan. He refused to fight Moose, if I'm not mistaken. No, Tony Khan did. Kenny, t- Kenny fight anybody. 
Don't squash every black person. But go on. Hey, man. It's all part of the storyline. Right. Hey, man. Hey, man. Shout out Jared, them Titans. Shout out Sunny Kiss. And I am Shout out Sunny the- Kiss. I'm going for two weeks. my boy. Two weeks. And I see that the Young Bucks last week in the opening segment. But everybody has a role in this game. All all life, you know what I'm saying? Everybody listen, has a role. I know Red Dragon graduated hip toss class with flying colors, but I don't need to see the Bucks beat the developmental more than once. Mm. And then my friend, my Trelawney like friend in Ricky Sparks, my real life friend, gets into a tip with Jay Lethal. <laughs> Word to the wise, the lethal injection is the one cutter in the business that people don't kick out of. Avoid, avoid, avoid. And then one of the most protect that wrestlers shit. on the planet that you're going to see later, Malachi Black. A guy who hung two losses on my name, and everybody knows I hate to lose. A man who needed no help added insult to injury by getting help in the form of just this size and speed and strength and i know we're not in the business of renaming people like gunner mcgilla buddy or whatever the hell it is gunner mcgilla buddy <laughs> yo <laughs> cheap pop cheap pop cheap pop wow, you were strength. saying everything else that he was saying with the cheap pop you was, cheap pop. Everything. You was just you cheering everything yourself. else on he knew he was gonna get a reaction out of that you though balls. You, cheap was pop. Cheering, you was cheering and everything else on out eight years i had the pom poms out until the kid shows Whoa. up Whoa. Now let's let let's let it finish. We 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 we, 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 we keep we keep pausing this. He's saying a lot of shit. The TNT champion Sammy Guevara, and then he brings finally talks about Sammy. These are men, a lineage, a legacy of champions, who taught you what you had been taught against. Everyone had been conditioned for twenty years that any title that doesn't have the world world in it is a secondary. (laughs) Shut the fuck up, (laughs) yeah. We don't have secondary. The only way it's secondary is because right now. There's two. I think it's pretty clear what we do. This nigga so sad. Tony Khan has yeah. a contract I'm not even going to hold you, bro. Like, like, this, this double title this ladder match shit is starting to get a little too overused. But yeah, they're so getting at this point. It's a little speech break. Never she forget who brought it back first. One champion. Boy, Damn, I don't know. Who did? What do you say? Miz, Miz and Dolph. Right? I think so for the IC, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Talking ladder match. I'm gonna say the first true double champion, in my opinion, was Chris Jericho. Yeah, okay, we that's a whole different level. That's a whole different level with Chris Jericho. And then in recent memory, um Santos, Escobar, and Austin Eat. Theory. No, no, don't don't do my boy like that. Uh, it was motherfucking Yo. Jordan Devlin. Oh, time out, time out. Esco. So this is the only thing that really got me hyped out of AEW. Recently. I got those niggas confused. Racist. The breakup of the inner circle. All oh, right, it's so, coming. Okay, hold it's that. coming. Hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that. But now that you play this. But yeah, I want, to, I want to get into the conversation. I want to get into the conversation at hand now. So coming off that, as Los, you said, in, in, from coming off the one part of the joint, cheap pop. Very cheap yeah, pop. Pops and wrestling. Is it good? Is it bad? We just listened to that promo. We heard them bring up motherfucking everybody in their storylines, WWE shit, old shit from 2000, whatever and shit. And that's not the only time we see shit like that. We see it happen. Britt Baker, Britt Baker with Ruby Soho. Like you just said earlier, Mox, I mean, Seth Rollins bringing up Moxley on, on WWE. You know what I'm saying? Or motherfucking when they when any type of wrestler is dealing with somebody or anytime a wrestler is dealing with Jeff Hardy they bring up his drunk his drunken history or some Come shit. on we're gonna pop for that too though I mean that's just <laughs> neither here nor there a cheap I mean but you can take it all the way to mankind going to every city hey we're here in Milwaukee Wisconsin shit like that you know what I'm saying like, it's, do that too. it's history of variances of cheap pops and I just want to ask y'all like is cheap pop in wrestling good or bad? Does it show creativity bad. or does it show yeah, less I'm going to say this right now. It's bad. It's lack. It, it's, it's, lack not, laziness. it's not just the fact that it's a cheap pop. You know, look, if you watch one thing, if you watch the whole thing he just said, like you guys right here, he mm-hmm. kind of breaks down where he's like, you know, he goes over each wrestler more or less. And he gives them like these nice, nice fluff ups. Mm-hmm. Right. So when he's talking about Jay Lethal, it's 
Jay Lethal seems like a great wrestler. He talks He's putting about, him on a pedestal first. Right. He, he put, talks up. Yeah, he, he says he says he has, pretty much says he has the best cutter in the in the game. His cutter right. can't get picked he's, up. He's not gonna mark the pedestal. Right. Yeah, keep on keep on pushing everyone up, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what you expect what? as a wrestler, right? Where it's like when you as far as from your wrestlers, like look, if you're gonna be out there, you're gonna be the one talking, you're gonna talk about people. Mm -hmm. You can't bury this person because I think that's, that's win, one, right? Right. Right. If you win, you beat a piece of shit. If you lose, exactly. you lost to a piece of shit. Exactly. Now, what he does in response, and this is why I said it's not about the other stuff. While it seems like that's a cheap pop, that's not cheap pop. It's you're doing your job. Mm -hmm. The cheap pop comes when it's like we're not in the business of renaming people and then proceed to ignore all the wrestlers you've renamed. Exactly. Or mm. they go back to their original. Right. Because like Jake Hager. It's his original name. Right. Well, I mean, also WWE owns a lot of their former names too. Yeah, so that that's that's mildly unfair too. Because no, it's not mildly unfair. It's you know the system. If if Holy Rose, Rose, but Gino, Holy, if they don't on, get wait, their, wait, wait, if wait. they can't get their names, hold on, wait. Holy I, I Rose, think we're going to do the Cody situation, which I'm Cody got his name. He paid for recently. It. Recently, remember how many years it took? Remember how many, years it, took, remember how many years it took, bro? Remember, remember it took a couple years. And the thing is, all suits and everything. What's his real last? It's name? been a grip. Reynolds. His, Cody oh. Reynolds. Right. So that's not his last name. He wants that stage name, and he had to pay to get his stage name. Correct. I think he was running with his first name, right? Huh? He was, he was just going by Cody. Just he was just going by Cody. Cody. Yeah. Right. But let's keep and, it tall. Like you don't want to go by the last name of you know what I'm saying of Reynolds. Like that's not like let's keep it tall. No, no, I'm not denying it. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, when you think of Reynolds, like, you don't even think of Dustin. You think of Terry. Right. Right. Like, and that's not and his then, mom's. Like, is, that, is that Terry's son? <laughs> yeah, that's not his mom's. So I can understand why he wouldn't go with Reynolds, but continue, though, G. Right, but it's, you had to fight for your name. And you right. had to change your name in order to get it. So it's right. weird you take a shot at somebody for doing something that you tell Ruby Soho, right? Was that the name she was using before in the independent circuit? Actually, I don't know what the fuck she was using in the Indies. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I know Brody, Brody Lee was an independent name. Malachi um, Black. Malachi Black wasn't an independent that's his, name. But that's his own thing. He, yeah, I remember so somebody. Wasn't he Tommy Black Tommy before? Black. Tommy yeah, N. Tommy N. But the thing is, he goes by that on his actual like Instagram handles. He still goes by Tommy N. But in AW, he uses Malachi Black. So right. You're doing that in NXT too. It ties into like literally some people, yes, they get that change, but some people are changing that shit to themselves because they don't want to go through the shit that Cody went through. And I think that another example of that is Andrade, where Andrade, oh no, perfect example of that, even outside of WWE, Penta, Pentagon Jr., the shit he had to go through with his name leaving AAA. It's just, it's mm. literally the same shit that motherfucking most of these guys go through. And they got to change the name like three, four times, wherever promotion. Yeah. Penta Settle Miedo, Penta Pentagon yeah. Jr., man, shit. Because these niggas, yeah. so I won't sit there and say it's just a WWE thing. It's literally a, a business thing, like where it, it depends on the, the business people you're working with, man. If these motherfuckers are, are honed on to shit that they create and keeping that shit, then that's what you got to expect to come with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's they're, they, I mean, they're looking at it as a patent at the end of the day. You're not about man. to walk off of my patent and get bread off of it. Intellectual property. I understand it totally. I understand it totally. You know what I'm saying? My thing is, is that with I think with the whole this whole topic over um, Walter and the name changes, it's happening within the company. Whereas, like my nigga, we've seen this guy. He was just outside. Walter. We like seen him on the outside as Walter. We seen y'all use him on the in, in in WWE as Walter Survivor Series. Survivor. He's been right. everywhere. What the fuck? So now all of Insulting a sudden, our he, intelligence. And Sinati touches the ground. He touches U.S. soil for for more than you know, which I've been asking for for a while. Now it's oh Gunther, like which is like what? Like that's it was just it's just weird. You know what I'm saying? That's like us. That's like getting Jungle Boy. And then where it's like, we've been naming them, calling them Jungle Boy all this time. And if y'all been noticing, motherfucking Jim, Jim Ross been trying to sneak it. Oh, let's Jungle Boy Jack Perry. Like trying to add the whole name into it and shit. Where it's like, we're not about to call him on it. That nigga's well, just that, I mean, he is Luke Perry's like, son. That's his dad. Understood. But they're trying to, they're trying to like mature him a little bit more other than just be, no, he's Jungle Boy Jack Perry. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's just like, mm, it's too late, bro. It's too late. 
Nah. He's already had the name. It's like us trying to give us Luchasaurus is a real name now. Like, nigga, he's yeah, That nigga's a wrestling dinosaur. You feel Luchasaurus me? Is a different, different thing. Like, let's go, like, Luchasaurus. To, to answer the question, to answer the question, I think cheap pops are bad. I, I think they're bad. I think they're bad just because it, it just, it's laziness. It's, hey, I'm in New York. Let me. No, 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 no. Like. Oh, okay. You're talking, you're talking about, this is, not, this is how I view it. I think those are like, the school it, cool hill yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, like, I, like say. JBL used to do. JBL used to do that all the time when he was in ECW. Uh, there's a whole DVD, One Night Stand, ECW One Night Stand 2005. You know, you where go, the I, is. I think, though, with that, you got if it works, though, if it continues to work over the decades, they don't all have hits. They don't all have I'm hits. Saying, though, if, if, if this, if me just downing your favorite basketball team or favorite sports player or whatever, you know who so used to do time, you know who that should work. I, mean, I can't be mad at it. The Rock, old the school Rock. Cena, two thousand three Cena, nah, like where I Cena. Take it, like, take, take it a year before. Take it a year before. He's right there. He said it. Rock. Hollywood, Hollywood Rock, Hollywood he, Rock. He, he, no, he Hollywood Rock. Before Hollywood Rock. Before Hollywood Rock. Okay. So you guys forgot when Rock used to. I was gonna say. I know if you were saying that. Yeah. But Rock, Rock before. Rock. Remember, the Rock used to float in between face and back. Remember True. when Triple H, Stone Cold, and um, mm -hmm. and Taker. Austin. Oh, they were okay. all they were all circling the title. Mm -hmm. Oh, when, when he, he had it. it. When he no, had no, it. Not even, not even when he just had it. When anyone had it. The, the, It'd the be like, number. each was like official heel. Also was official babyface. And Rock would be the one that like interchanged so in between on the storyline. Right. Or Austin would be in the middle. Or Triple H would be in the middle. But mm -hmm. when The Rock was there, The Rock would be like, he'll get the fans excited. And then sometimes mm -hmm. he'll be there. And so he'll be on the bad guy side. And the mm -hmm. fans, he'll be like this. He'll still get the millions and millions. But he'll be, when he talks about the city, like, I don't want to eat this. This is the worst thing. Ah, you remember when, ah. when the Armageddon shit, like the build up to the Armageddon cage match, when he did the impression of all them niggas? No, that was top five. For, that's one of the best. Nigga, best that. He bodied that shit. But I think, but obviously, he's a. Ow. He's a. Ah. He's a, he's a he's like, one like, by one. <laughs> that shit was. Because when I be thinking of shit like that, the I dead man and the Mickey Mouse <laughs> tattoos, bro. <laughs> Oh, oh the Undertaker shit? Yeah. yeah. The <laughs> I, think, I, I just think he just be like, this shit they just do in the backstage area. They just joking around. He was freestyling more for the time, he said. He was freestyling yeah. a lot of that. That's funny. Yo, sad, but his Triple H impression, you knew that came from animosity because it was too good. Oh, oh yeah. Good. I mean, <laughs> well, I, was, uh, 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 I, I, I say a little bit of both because... <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, H is a guy where it's like he can take a joke on himself. If you know throughout the year, what? Come on, bro. He's I'm, a good worker. Like, you think you think he's a he's a worker like that where he can take a good joke? A lot of videos that I've seen where he's being joked or they caught like this part where you have you'll see him like holding back laughter. You know what I'm saying? Like that's from me, from what I like. You see Maybe him holding DX, back. DXH? Nah, bro. I'll be real. I'm talking like real. I'm talking there's like a Barack, litany of bro. people. There's a litany of Barack people Austin who said. Niggas. Who said that yo they cracked jokes on Triple H? Triple H laughed and then went to Vince and was like, I'm burying this nigga. Fire this and nigga, proceeded, please. proceeded to take niggas out. Like this all is right. I don't think Triple H could take a joke. And I think when nigga, is Triple right. H you and, your, you and your homies jo joking on the block, right? Nah, 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 it, nah, that, that, no, 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 let me finish. Let me finish. Y'all y'all you and your homies joking on the block. You know, you know when you got niggas that can snap, like you would notice those certain niggas that can really go at you, right? And you got certain niggas is like Boy, I I clean your shit up right now, right? And he actually you, does. Say you're on the block, right? Yeah, we got shit joking, right? You say, bro, bring his cousin around, and he getting on the jokes. Niggas looking at this nigga like, you ain't. Boy, if you don't get your motherfucking nigga, but you're also that was, that was outside bad. of an inside joke. Nah, I, think, I, I think that's a bad bad analogy because this. Nah, is what I think it is. so. I think it's definitely if you're this around this people is. who are used to joking with you, and you got new people who are you're they, like they, they, new they, niggas like. They're gonna treat you like bro. Like who was this nigga? Like he's not. I'm you not know the clip niggas used to fire Triple H ass up. You know exactly. they used to fire that nigga ass up. And that was the whole point I was about to make was Triple H wasn't the regular employee. So that that analogy doesn't work. They used to fire him up in the back. Triple H. Triple he was H, uh, nigga getting bullied. Remember Triple H used to remember Triple H when he because he came over from WCW. He was a he was he was friends with the big guys and the big guys left. The only whom left him was Shawn Michaels. He oh, got the buried sandwich for, era. Right. He got buried for a minute. And if it wasn't for DX actually getting crop pops from the crowd. Mm -hmm. Remember, right when DX took off, 
Shawn Michaels left. Well, no, before that, you know, Shawn Michaels became his, he took him under his wing type of shit. And he started to slowly abandon that little aristocrat, aristocrat gimmick. Little no, I'm saying, no, 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 I'm saying, the, no, no, I'm saying like what happened essentially was Trip, Shawn Michaels was like, yo, before, essentially what it looked like to me is Shawn Michaels was like, the one thing I'm going to do before I leave here is make sure I get Triple H over. Once Triple H was over, smile. I lost my smile on the wrestling no more. You know, no like, funny uh, though. No funny. I don't see nothing wrong with that. Nah, and that's fine. Helping his man. Yeah, right. But this is what I'm saying. That's what I feel. That's what feel. Brian Danielson did with with a couple of niggas before he left. WWE. Up until that point, Triple H was one of the regular guys. The minute he started, nah, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Hold on. He was. He. Uh, I. No, nah, I gotta give H's credit. You know, I got. I always gotta shoot for H's. So he was in that time. Those nineties, one of their viable mid carders, if not top mid carder with Rock. Them two niggas yeah. held their mid carder. Intercontinental also, champions. Like, Intercontinental championship matches used to be no, fire. You were about to skip over like he was just the nobody did when he got smacked. I didn't down. say. I didn't say. Whoa, whoa. You, know, you, say? you, you were about to say SmackDown. You kind of skipped was over a, icy title, right? Yeah. No, because that wasn't relevant. He was a regular guy. No, nah, it is. Nah, it is. No, 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 no. Nah. This is why it was. Right, so, so nah. I'm gonna ask you this. 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 SummerSlam. That was a classic. Just explain this to me. What the fuck does that have to do with him fucking the boss's daughter? Oh my god. I'm just saying, can't no, no, prove no, that. No, no, we no, can't no, prove that's that. What, that's what I'm pushing. No, because you were saying. No, no, no. Because I said, I said, I said he was just a regular employee. And you're mm -hmm. saying no? Well, does well, no, that? You're and like, you're and I'm going. I'm going. No, I'm moving towards that. Yeah, he's a regular employee. He's a regular guy. He's a regular. I think you're employee. insinuating as a regular guy as just like some nigga. Nah, just, I'm saying like, Triple like H. One of the niggas that's not like utilized. No, we gotta remember the whole thing was Triple H was like, okay, ha ha ha, I can go. And get, I'm gonna go get you fired now. Because once Triple H was once it hit two thousand. 2001, 2002? Nah, was 2004. Like, he didn't marry Steph in 2004. No, no, he was... I'm not listening. The storyline was there in the two, in 2000, 2000, 99, 2000 era, ish, ish. But they ain't, they ain't start, like, they ain't no, get married. No, 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 no. Because this is what I'm trying to explain to you. In 2000, Let me go take a shot, man. In 2001 that. to 2002, that's when he went. We're gonna get a chaser. Like, Look at this nigga. You need a chaser. Mm -hmm. That's when it was. I'm not hey, a drinker. H, you know what? We're about to do the brand, the brand splits and stuff. That's coming up soon. You're taking. You're coming back from an injury. Hey, um, we're gonna push you, and mainly because Steph is telling us you're gonna. You're a great wrestler. Because remember, in 2000, stop, 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 stop. stop. Oh, Triple H oh, was no. Right, 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 right. No, 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 no
Because the only niggas who, like, even, even niggas who had, like, the locker room air on Vince, they could get your push killed, but they couldn't get you taken off TV like that. They can turn you into a jobber. Triple H could be like, ha, 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 ha. you're I, I not going to be on TV think, no more. I think Taker could have did it, but he just wasn't that type of guy. Taker is on record saying he had a lot of respect for Triple H because Triple H, he had to scratch his way out of that curtain call bullshit because he was in the doghouse for a while. Let's not forget that. He I'm was in the doghouse for a while. Yeah, we all, we all brought, I think we all acknowledge that. Right. And what I'm saying is, Shawn Michaels went hard to get him out. I'm saying Shawn Michaels pretty much went on the campaign for that. And that's not a secret. I mean, don't uh, Triple H is, did most of the work, though. That's nothing wrong. I'm not denying him. I'm not, I'm not, again, I'm not denying You know, his he got he got to wrestle the match. You can. Probably, I'm not denying his in ring. I'm not denying yeah. his in ring. We're not talking you gotta, about you still his in ring the opportunity. You still got to knock that. We're not talking about his yeah. in ring stuff, right? Because we've already established that. Young but Triple I think what you're, I think you're mixing up backstage politics and just trying to make sure your homie get out of the fucking mud. Not what I'm saying is you can't say that. Oh yeah, Triple H. Can take a joke when there's years of people being buried because bro, I'm, talking joke about, I'm talking about H H years in a game, bro. Like niggas is years in a game by these times. Yo, like, by the time if you compare Triple H now, this bro, is what I'm, I'm talking, saying. I'm, this I'm, is I'm the, talking about like years when you see those videos of like them during like the fucking um after show and shit where they all in the ring just joking around and shit, or you'll see Rock joking around on Taker Kane and. H or some shit like that. And niggas are really just laughing and joking around in front of the crowd because when they're still doing it, they're still being a character, but they're just loosening up. You know, right. And how you know Cody is approaching Triple H status. We went <laughs> from Cody to Triple H. Uh, no, nah, because because <laughs> yo, if you look, and this is another thing, I really want you to look back at all the stuff involving The Rock and Triple H because you start finding out The Rock doesn't like Triple H. Bro, we are, I know the stories about Rock versus right. and, and, and Triple and, H and them but, niggas, that's why it's weird but, when it's like, oh yeah. Know, as a kid, I didn't notice that because these niggas were fucking money together in the ring. Because I would not know that. You know what I'm saying? Again, and you this is the thing. That when it came down to Triple H, you know, business, you know why it's so hard for Triple H? shoot out the window. When it came down to business, Every almost everyone who's a, who was a fan of wrestling back in the day. Damn, how did we and get? His, and as wrestlers, they talk to they talk to <laughs> niggas like The Rock. They talk to niggas like Dwayne Johnson because The Rock's not hard to get in contact of. Right. If you're a pro, if you if you're a pro wrestler, there's a reason why Triple H went back and rebuilt his legacy using NXT. Because NXT, remember, before Triple H got his hands on NXT, NXT was developmental territory. You're gonna. W. We're gonna turn these guys into the WWE guys that we need, mm. right? I won't say Triple H came in and said, "Like, no, we're gonna almost exclusively grab all these indie talents, and we're gonna turn these guys into the guys we need." Like William Regal did to me, and it's like, no, that's not what this is for. I'm gonna turn this into the third brand. That's not what this is for. This is to make our to make new wrestlers for us. But see, that's tough to say though. Cool. You, when you have some guys like when you guys 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 like CM Punk, Seth Rollins, for example, who come from that that raw indie area and are like when they when they got that opportunity to be in the WWE light, they they meshed like almost like effortless effortlessly. And I'm even talking about Punk seeing like Punk and Heyman era. I'm talking about like ECW Punk. Like that nigga came in smoothly and just gravitated to the you know what I'm saying to the top. You know what I'm saying? Like smoothly. Uh, yeah, but again, come on, bro. That nigga, think, run, that nigga run to the money to the money bank, yeah. money in the bank to the world heavyweight title. Was You're talking smooth. about yeah, that transition was pretty quick too. Like he got he got it twice and he cashed it in twice. And look at Seth, same way. smooth as shit. Okay, right. But that's Seth, why I think that's Seth, why I think H was like, okay, I think I I think I found it. We got to find these type of guys, not just your everyday. Indie guy. That's why they ain't get no motherfucking Joey Janela. Or they tried Sammy Callahan and didn't work out. Mm-hmm. But you know what I'm saying. But Moxley worked. You know what I'm saying. So they found the certain guys from these indies that was like, all right, these work. These guys are able to translate. Let's find more of these guys. You know what I'm saying. And it's just right. I think it started to get into where the idea. All right, we just getting all the popping indie guys. 
know what I'm saying, that don't need developing. That's where I think it got messed up, where it's like, all right, these guys so, are already developed. What's the development they need? Are we going to transit to the WWE style if they already developed? Oh, no, they've already, the, a lot of right. guys have already admitted they didn't even know the production side of the house. So they didn't know how to turn towards the right cameras. They didn't know how to do the right cuts. Well, I guess, I guess I'm speaking more so of the, the Robert they, Roods, the mm-hmm. uh, Drew McIntyre's. Uh, the, right, Robert Rood, Robert yeah. Rood wasted time, like, Anyway, besides yeah, that's another story. But actually, actually, let's. let's I think. Let's try to I think if we're, if we're gonna go and we're gonna talk about like the the way everything goes down, right? Mm-hmm. Triple H. If we're talking about like how back in the day, like Triple H was this guy who was who was cool. A W just knocked us off. Facebook. Ah, <laughs> uh, they that was what came up. What did they say? They, they, we blocked everywhere, but on Facebook. Every- Oh, you're blocked everywhere, but worldwide type shit. Are we blocked on Twitter? No, 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 we're not blocked. We just blocked. That's, on that's the world. Oh. Actually. That's the actual world. Facebook is not. That's the world. world. <laughs> that's the actual that's world. The world. That's the world. Yeah, Facebook is is virtual reality now. <laughs> yeah, because they don't even show up. Meta. Right. But, the um, metaverse. Yeah. All right. So next time you play it, play it at one point seven five speed. Right. Mm-hmm. Or I'll just actually play the audio or something. But anyways, though, um, like, it, let's let's find a way to bring it back like, because. I was gonna say when you yeah. when you look at like Cody Rhodes and them at AEW, the stuff they're emulating, the whole idea what they're trying to be is we're trying to be the alternative to WWE. We're trying to compete and show the same program as WWE in so many words. But we don't want you guys to watch WWE. We want you guys to watch us. But we're gonna mention WWE and current stuff in WWE. The only way you know this, and this gets a pop, is if you're watching WWE. Exactly. Well, that's the thing, Richard, where I get I think I get confused with AW because it's like in the beginning they were saying we're not trying to compete with them, we're trying to be the alternative, right? And and this was for Tony Khan, but then you got your your leaders in your locker rooms when it, when these these data and shit come out, they starting to, you know what I'm saying, shoot at WWE and shit. Oh, we beat you and we do this whoop de whoop. You know what I'm saying? And and some of it is on the media too. You know what I'm saying? Because I think though they, they coincide with it. They see they doing it, then they jump on the shit too. But um, but yeah, with that though, it's just it only coincides with the fucking fact that it, it's like it's one hand helping the other at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? AEW wrestlers are still fans of the culture. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And not and that's not to say WWE wrestlers aren't fans of the culture. We we clearly know that, but they live in the bubble. You know what I'm saying? WWE to an extent is damn near ran like a Patriots fucking um um, the, um organization. Where it's Bruce like Richard is, is on stupid. record to saying that that's that crazy. There's, a, there's a there's a WWE bubble that nothing is supposed to come out and nothing is supposed to come in. And I, and this thing is like when we hear with Moxley when he says when he first had him watch I think it was AEW match. You know what I'm saying? He, it was it was news that he watched an AEW match just because, like you, we were talking about earlier, just the fact that they're so in their bubble that when somebody brings up somebody from another place or any of that nature, it goes crazy. Just, even the fact when you know what I'm saying, Carl Anderson and them came to WWE. Oh, they wrestled in New Japan and all that stuff. So the fact that that they brought up New Japan was crazy because they live in their own bubble. Even right. knowing that they had surprising a with these motherfuckers before, it's just, it was surprising. Yeah, we're so conditioned now for these motherfuckers not to bring them anybody else up. That is, it becomes quote unquote a cheap pop. Where it's like, I don't know, like what what that could be is. Is that a cheap pop, or we are just conditioned to look at it as such? In recent years, it might be a, it might be us just realizing that we're conditioned. Because, like, look at now, like WWE advertised Mickey James, the Impact, the what is it, the the NWA champion, the Impact champion, Impact, Impact World Champ, Impact. Oh, they yeah. advertised her for the Rumble as that. Yeah. So it now it, it it might just be where the lines are blurred, perhaps. Well, I'm not gonna lie. We are. I still on the fence. I'm still not on the fence. I'm on the hill that they are only bringing these people in because they don't have nobody. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole you reason why SmackDown. They refer to Summer Rae as a as a legend. Yeah, that was weird. But anyways, but yeah, I think cheap pops and wrestling man. It goes back to the last conversation we had last show where this was just lack of creativity. You know what I'm saying? Even I, I got to throw that same that same way at um, MJF mm-hmm. too. Like you're gonna have to start finding ways. Yeah, but he's away. He, 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 come on now. It's Cut cool. him a little slack. It's cool, but we're gonna give. We're gonna give the CM. We don't get Miz slack. But he doesn't. He doesn't. She doesn't bring up 
other people like that. You know what I'm saying? Now the thing is, he'll do a cheap pop as bring it like doing some personal. That's WWE's version of like their cheap. Like let me shoot at you personally. Let me bring up something from your marriage or something from your real or something. Go either way. You know it goes either way. So that's their version of cheap pops and shit. But I think it's I think it's really it's starting to get to a lack of creativity where it's like that's the only thing you can do to garner heat or 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 a pop in, in wrestling now. Come like once again, we need uh we need more creatives in wrestling, man. More creatives. You know what I'm and saying? Those executive I'm, positions and those writer positions. Like we get it. We all are on social media, we all see everything, we all on Instagram, we all see everything. That doesn't mean incorporate that shit into your promo. Like, what's the joint? I think the post where it's like AW, ABW, uh, AW promos be like, it was like looking up different um, WWE news and shit like that. In the same, in the spirit of cheap pops, are they good or bad? This is still in the same, in the same realm. Mm -hmm. Mauro Ronaldo, he's a pop culture. He likes to drop pop culture references every chance he gets. Mm -hmm. Is that a bad cheap pop, or is is it bad or good on his end of the spectrum? Uh, a little bit of both. I mean, it got to a point where it's like, okay, are you only doing this to the point where it's like you get get us to be like, oh, he's he's in tune with the culture. Well, he's a boxing analyst too, and he does it there as well. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. It was like just to get you know, what I'm saying black people or people that's in tune with hip hop culture and any of that nature. To cheer and be like, oh, Mar Ronaldo is he's cool, you know what I'm saying? But who's to say that? I seen niggas popping though. Pause. I, I, I seen I, niggas popping for Mar Ronaldo is still one of my favorite announcers. Like, still to this day, I'm not gonna take away from his passion that he gives to the um, game. But still to say though is that he's like the game of of ring announcers of of commentating. He's Just the game. game. He's the game. Yo, am I going to Photoshop? Is the cover that's going to be me Photoshopping his face in the documentary cover? I don't know, bro. But I'm just saying he, he does a lot of that shit. But it's like, I know who to say that he really isn't a fan of the culture. That he That's just how he does his shit. You know what I'm saying? You got to check, check his, you know, yeah. check his footprint. See where he at. The top mm -hmm. five, my nigga. Run that top five. <laughs> yeah, Marvel Nolan going to have to run his top five hip-hop albums all the time. Do you like, think, do you think he has a Jay-Z album there? You know, it's cliche. If you don't got Blueprint there, I'm going to be a little skeptical. What Jay-Z album do you think he has on there? Blueprint 3. <laughs> What's the most mainstream Jay-Z album? He got it. Blue, blue, blueprint 3 for sure. White people love that album. Nigga got a Kanye album. He might have Yeezus on there. Nah, he ain't going to have Yeezus. He's going to have some shit like Graduation or some shit. Was graduation? Was, I was going to say. Like, he going to do some shit like that. He definitely got a Biggie album. But no, but fuck up, but yo, Moxley is back. What did y'all think about his promo that he had on um on AW this week? I thought that shit was really, really dope, man. As some as knowing somebody like that people in, in, in my uh family that's been through shit like that, you know what I'm saying? That shit was uh was very, very like good to see. Like that's one thing you know with me with music or any anything film or any, I love vulnerability. You know what I'm saying? I love people who are able to, you know what I'm saying, open themselves up in the public. He looks good. You know what I'm saying? Um, they did a little comparison, and he no, looks he, a lot he better. Definitely, he definitely slimmed down. I didn't even know it was like, I thought he would just gain, like, actual money. That, sh that was the whiskey. Like, damn. That was the whiskey. Like, damn. <laughs> that was the whiskey. I was like, damn, bro. Like, I, the whiskey gave him the quagmire face? Like, damn, son. I think it's the fuck down. But but nah though man like it was really good to like to see it. and like I ain't gonna lie that's probably one of my favorite like Moxley promos that I've just heard any because it was just it was raw you know what I'm saying even to the point where the dude in the in the crowd was like you know what I'm saying who let this drunken piece of shit in here or some shit like that and he was like hey go fuck yourself you think that's a word <laughs> no like no it was remember we were just watching the Cody promo it was niggas that was like you know what I'm saying also oh, niggas were just wilding yeah niggas is stay wilding bro it was like, wilding all night. Yeah, you dickhead ass fans and shit, bro. But he four, shot three, four, at four, yeah, man. He shot at that nigga, got that nigga to fuck up out of there and shit, bro. Like all that was that whole promo was crazy, bro. Like him like, on Rampage, though. He no, looked him versus Ethan Page was a good match, man. I really wish they just utilized Ethan Page more, but huh. Brian Daniels, man. Nah, bro, he's dope, bro. They need to Brian get Brian Danielson, game. though. That's gonna be Brian dope. Danielson versus Moxley. They've never had a one on one match on record. Oh, uh, DB mm -hmm. and Moxley. 
I can't find it. That would be dope, man. I'm interested. They never had one. Clash, man. I'm interested to see how they clash. It's kind of like how uh, MJF say, "Oh, you gotta actually wrestle versus me." This is gonna be like that times ten. You seen that picture? Is a tweet. It's of uh, the Shield versus the Usos and Daniel Bryan from 2013, and the tweet says, um, "These they're all in storylines together still to this day." Yeah, yeah. That just shows how greatly these dudes, these dudes have been around. It's crazy that you can look. These dudes damn near been around. Or, no, not damn. They have been around for ten years. Yeah, true. They got Shield. Shield is going on ten years. They debuted it, in Survivor Series 2012. Yeah. Yeah, like that's crazy to say, bro. Like, but man, I'm 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 amped to see what 2022 is gonna look like for Moxley mentally. Like he says, like he said, out of anybody in wrestling right now, I am actually free right now, and it's mentally, physically. He said that. that when he left WWE, though. Well, now he I actually, heard that part. Actually, means it though now, like because he's he's free of his own shit mentally from what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? No, and that's and no disrespect. Like, I get that. Like, that's... That's, you know, just, that's, that's just... It's really dope to see, like... And me, like I said, it's dope for him to show that to the people, too. You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm going to be real. Go ahead, bro. The only thing I can say about this, about John Mark, This nigga. Is, you gonna, I'm glad <laughs> he's not, gonna say this. I'm not saying that. Wow, I'm glad he's not doing crack. That's it. That's it. He said he smoked crack before. And I'm glad that's not the addiction. You know who paid me. for that rehab. That's all I'm going to say. And they just dropped his name on SmackDown. You know Why who paid for that matter? rehab. Why does that matter so much? Why am I going to help you if you don't work for me no more? Unless there was a reason behind it. Because people are, you know, people can just have good. Yeah, you know, you know him and Vince McMahon actually like, like, like he liked Vince, Vince liked them. Bro, people Vince just wanted him to stay with the company. Like, this is the weird shit that, like, a lot of people. That's why I get mad at so many people at eight, like that IWC shit. Where it's like, let's oh, say yeah. four, three, four. Fuck the yeah. movies. Nah, 434, four, I'm cool with some of them. You're so yeah. mad they don't want you no more, bro. No, they banned all of us. Not me. I can still post in 434. Three, four. I mean, 434, four, nah, I'm cool. I'll be in there fighting with them. Fuck like, <laughs> them niggas, man. Exposed turnbuckle is the, is the, is the spot. Oh, my Exposed God. turnbuckle, they, they got some honkies in there, too. That'd be wildin'. But, but they, they, got, they got the joints. But, like, real, 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 real snapping facts. Storm and shit. Like, like there's a big, a big kind of. There's a big idea that Vince McMahon is like this out of touchy guy who doesn't talk with. Him. A lot of the wrestlers when they he get is. out, no, hold on. A lot of the wrestlers when they get out, they'll say like, "No, I actually talked with Vince. Vince actually knows what he's talking about. He has some great ideas. It's not just Rusev. Now, no, I'm not talking about Rusev. I'm talking." <laughs> hey, you fool! I got you. I heard. I got you. You think that? You think no, that? No, Rusev. Rusev was like, nah. He knows he Rusev or Russo. I thought you said Russo, like he was saying Vince Russo. No, nah, yeah, Rusev was like, no, Vince heard my idea and never used it and just went completely left field with my shit. Right, but so he don't listen. No, 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 no. I didn't say he doesn't listen. I'm saying you're expecting him to. He listen don't listen to everybody. everybody. Right. That's the one good it? though. Nah, it's the truth. Sometimes you gotta just be like, yo, oh shit. Sometimes you just gotta be like. Vince is not perfect, man. Like, Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I gotta send you this. No, so Vince is why me? Perfect. Why me specifically? I, I it continues to say oh, why. No. This is the reason that when you've been watching WWE for so long, you should know what the fuck you're getting into. The same thing with Karrion Cross and, and Scarlett Bordeaux. When they said they signed no contracts, they knew exactly what the hell they were getting into with WWE. You know what I'm saying? And I believe that with ah. a good 80, 90 percent of the wrestlers that signed, you to know WWE, what I pop for? What the fuck is going on? Nah, bro, I'm looking at the nunchucks. But AEW, <laughs> like, all right. So talk about Rusev and Vince. Vince knew what Rusev was trying to do, and it just wouldn't have flown with the AEW with the WWE crowd. Keep it a buck. A lot of what these guys wanted was, hey, I want to do some attitude error shit. And it's this isn't attitude error no more. They wanted to live a fantasy. They the the, the fantasy right. for a they lot of these younger to, indie they, dudes is going to the E. They're going into WWE and they're acting like Tommy Dreamer around Ric Flair. Mm. They're fanboys and forgot they're about that nigga. <laughs> I forgot we bodied that nigga. <laughs> Dude, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that nigga dishes. Wait, hold on, hold on. You gotta smoke that dreamer bag. Yeah, oh, go check out that plane ride. Yeah, be careful. It might, it might assault you on the way down. 
Go check out that plane ride from hell episode for real. That was a funny ass episode. But nah, man, like the but thing that's that, that, yeah, that's how WWE that's how AEW is now. It's like a lot of people like, oh, I went to WWE and I got mad. They wouldn't let me bleed or cut myself all over TV. They only let a few people do it like once or twice a year. A lot of like, ECW niggas couldn't cut a fucking promo either. Yeah, and it's like, oh, yo, these guys at WWE are mad that you know I'm not selling merchandise. But you know, look at my fuck kids T-shirt. They're selling now, and it's like, oh yeah, you had that shirt. No, I'm just saying in general, that's kind of their whole whole mentality. It's like, oh, why is W why is WWE so focused on merchandising? It's like, well, yeah, because they have their own in-house kitty engine. Well, Ari, speaking of ECW, someone had an opinion on the Mox return from ECW oh, formerly. Yeah. He got he get, he's about to go up and go out though. And the fucked up part is about. It's like Bully Ray had no reason to say anything. He should have just like because he already looked kind of bad with the um dreamer shit. He tried to low key cake for dreamer. He tried. I mean, that's, that's his that's his show part. I mean, he I, I understand, you know what I'm saying? That's his home. So he he tried to he tried to, you know what I'm saying, cape for him. But his reason, his whole thing we were saying after the um Moxley uh promo and such is that he didn't have any uh what do you say? Uh no apology to the fans. He didn't take accountability to his what he what his 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 time away from the fans and such like that. The people that paid their tickets and such to see John Moxley and he wasn't there. He didn't take accountability for that and apologize to those fans. And a lot of people are like, "Nigga, what?" Like, no. Nah, and I, I I I'm not gonna front. I agree with that. That sounds wild friend. to say. But remember, remember what Kobe said. Like Kobe was when he was talking to his wife Vanessa. Like, yo, why are you playing through all these injuries and stuff like that? You know, you hurt. He's like, yo, look, my job is to come out here and play basketball, day in, day out. I go to the gym, I work out. I go to the gym, I work out. And all that. There's people whose jobs are I have to clean the floor, I have to do this, I have to pick up shit. You know what I mean? Day in and day out, and they spent that money that they've earned doing something real fucking horrible that they're not happy to watch me do something I'm happy doing. I'm fucking going to be here to make sure these people are paying to see me. You're paying, they're spending their time thing. He may not, he may, even if you give this person the money back, like say, it's like, hey, I'm not able to do this. Uh, that time back that like, yo, I allocated time to spend here to do this. This is the only free time I have. This amount I scheduled everything. The sitters off, all of that. This this built-in cost to going to see certain things that sometimes is an adult, and it sucks when it's like the one person who I really want to see, and I saved up all money all year to come and see, and they may not be back this way for a year or two. Can't make it. And I get personal issues. Everyone understands That's that. why I'm against load management for that reason. Because, like, you never know what a person was looking forward to. My they wanted is, to see Curry. They wanted to see Kawhi. Like, if you're going to do load management, I want to know what games you've taken off beforehand. So, so I don't buy tickets. I like that. That's a good idea. Because, and I also want, like, oh, well, this, Set guy it aside. this guy didn't play today. He's not. Is he playing? No, cool. I want a full refund. Why? Because I bought these tickets to see this person play. And if they're not playing, therefore I'm not getting the experience. I see. That would be unrealistic, though. No, that would be because that's realistic. a lot of refunds, my nigga. That's a lot of bread. Right, but that thing is this: you can't. Like, I don't get mad when fans boo people because they paid money to be there. Because you're not going to be like, all right, I'm kicking you out and giving you your money back. That's what Cody said. He said the same thing. That's why he don't go crazy about people booing him and shit. You can't do nothing about that. Yeah. Somebody says, fuck you in the crowd, cool. No problem. You say you want my kid dead, I'm killing you. That's fine. Yeah, that's different. different thing, right? Yeah, that's, why I understood, that's why I understood why Moxie was like, nah, get this dude out of here. Because he's like, yo, come on, fam. Like, nah, I ain't care about that. What did the dude say? I, I, I didn't he know what like, he was like. He was like, there was like something about like, who let this drunken piece of shit in here or some shit like that? That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Nah, 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 nah. That's listen, funny. listen, listen, that listen. Funny. I wouldn't be surprised if that was an AEW plan in order to make Mox look cool. Nah, it's not that serious. Nah, I think it's not that serious, bro. Not that serious. Why would he bro. say that? This man just left rehab, man. Bro, that's, the, that's, you know, that's, 
Listen, listen. But this is this is all that happened. Niggas right ain't here. shit, bro. That guy right now has his voice recorded in for immortality in the AEW. The IWC ain't shit, bro. They really ain't. And I'm putting myself, ourselves in that. We a part of that. Yes, y'all niggas ain't shit. Anyway, so, no, you too, nigga. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I'm that, more than just not. I'm not shit, nigga. I'm I a thought, I ain't, I mean, me personally, like I ain't gonna lie. I probably would have like. <laughs> like forgot it. Like I would probably dub the shit the same way, but I understood why he was like, "Nah, get this nigga up out of here," because I'm literally giving my testimony right here. My nigga, you was like, "Come on," right? And I can get after that moment. Saying, you know what I'm like, yeah, that was some corny. Fuck, fuck giving the fans an apology now. These niggas assholes. <laughs> if he like, like I'll be real. If he came out there and heard that shit and just looked at the mic and look, like looked at the camera and just like. Fuck it, I'm going full heel tonight. Suck my dick. Oh, <laughs> just wildin', shit. Wildin', yo, everybody. He's already on that borderline. But was, my thing is that we're saying, like, with that, where's the reason I can be like, what was I about to say? Um, yeah, I don't I think he doesn't have to, he didn't have to apologize. Cause it's like, if you for one, if you are a fan of John Moxley, and you not saying that if you didn't know, like you not saying everybody is sitting here on the internet all day. But if you watch AW or any of that nature, they definitely let it be known that Sun was going to rehab, all of that nature and such. So you were privy to the news of what was going on with Sun and such. And then for the fact that when you come back and such, it's the thing, it's just about just that's where I said where I always say you gotta strip titles and and accolades and all that such and look at people for at the end of the day as a human being. You know what I'm saying? So, and I think people tend to this, forget this to is do a day that. job for him. This this is a day job. job. Yeah, a lot of people tend to forget to do that when it comes to sports and and celebrities and such like that. And when our fandom comes into space, where or our, like I said, our dollars and shit like that, where it's like, oh no, I'm spending my money and all of that shit to come see you. You got that's kind of selfish in this sense. Like I get you're doing that, but what about like my and my side on the end of the day? Like, like I might not know what you'll be going through at your home, but you might not be know what's going on in my home either. So I can't fault for what's I can't fault you or you know what I'm saying come at you for what's going on in your home and say, oh, well, it's not he didn't show up to my show because he he couldn't get off of work. So I'm not gonna fault that. You know what I'm saying? Just as if I make it to I can't make it to this ship for my joint, you know what I'm saying? You shouldn't you I, sh I should hope you wouldn't fault me. You know what I'm saying? Everybody goes through real life shit. Like I still I'm still a real I'm still a real human being. At the end of the day, I'm not no man-made product that comes out of a, out of a factory came here to entertain you. You know what I'm saying? I'm birthed out of a out of a pussy just like you. You know what I'm saying? Put on this earth to same 24 hours. Yeah, same I don't know when I ain't heard that one. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, everybody got the same 24 hours in the work. You know what I'm saying? So we all are living the same life. You know what I'm saying? We. I'm just. Yeah, yeah. Don't say yeah. that. Don't say everybody got the same 24 hours to work. We I'm don't be like LLC Twitter. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not hold saying 24 on. hours to work. I'm saying 24 hours to live. Don't be like LLC Twitter. <laughs> I'm not saying 24 hours to work. Saying 24 hours to live. Like we all, we all living on this earth at the same time, bro. Like you're going through shit. I'm going through shit. You know what I'm saying? I just happen to be in a position where I'm entertaining you, and you're in a position to be paying to see me. I vehemently disagree with that take, and I'm gonna point this out once, and I want, I want, I want to articulate this with the with the proper metaphor. If I go to a restaurant and they're advertising this thing on the menu, I call, I make my reservations. Yeah, this is what we have on the menu. Okay, I'm coming there to get this. Please have it ready when I get there. Okay, cool. When I showed up, they say, hey, even though we have all this plenty of time to call you and tell you, we don't have this on the menu. Do I have the right to get mad? It's like, yo, hey, our truck driver got sick, you know, I know this is the reason why you came here, but you can't be mad. He's a fucking human, even though you're a human too, and you had to do all the same shit. Can I answer your question with a question? Go ahead. What if the alternative they offer you was better than the what you were looking forward to? Listen, if I'm about to, there's no alternative to a, a three million dollar crackhead wrestling. Damn, why you gotta call him a crackhead? Bro? Because he is now. He's a dunk crack, and he's admitted to it. He said it. He liked it. I mean, most people like nah. say a crackhead. What's a crackhead? Always a crackhead. Always a crackhead. Now, all I'm saying yeah. is, you're telling me someone that's what they making, say. That's, was making that's what they say. I heard. I heard. I, I don't be in crack circles like that. <laughs> he's making upwards of $3 million, and he's feeling sad. I get that. Cool. He's depressed. 
Bro, he was having no wait, 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 wait. He had an alcohol addiction, my nigga. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I get it. I get it. No, no, I'm not denying it. You gotta get it. out of this soon, too, man. Like, you, you, said you, didn't deny, you just didn't say it. You can't you can't then say, like, oh well, you know what? Hey, because I'm bad at my job and I'm human, you guys should not feel bad. No, it is. He's bad part of his job is required to be sober. Don't make that face. He couldn't do it. That's why he was at rehab. True or false. Bro, I won't say that he was bad at his job. He's if your job is requiring you to be so weird, it's either your it's either your CM Punk. We don't know what drove Jeff Hardy. We don't know what drove Jeff Hardy. Was he CM Punk or was he Jeff Hardy? Was he CM Punk? Was he Jeff Hardy? Was he CM Punk? Twenty. He had one of his best years, bro. So and he did do it. He was Jeff Hardy. He was Jeff Hardy. The point being is he wasn't sober. That's the problem. If he can't do his job sober. Then he's not doing it's not his that job. he wasn't doing his job, so he was doing his job. It's his at home life that was that was getting fucked up, bro. He nah. wasn't saying his work was getting fucked up. He, he was showing up to work. Okay. What what we got next, man? We got next. No, 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 no. We party now, bro. No, so don't do that. No, we party now. Party now. Nah, because I, no, I honestly think though, like I think he was the thing is he was balancing and his thing. He was he took the mo moment to have self reflection where it's like nah. This is getting to a point where it's like, I can't handle it too much. That's the point where it's like, if he wasn't, he got to the point where it's like, niggas like Scott Hall, where it's like, nah, I'm going to continue to do this. And I'm right. actually like, you know what I'm we saying? We don't know what drove him to that point. Right. Oh, no, he's, he's admitted that he's wrestled drunk before. That's why but I'm that's just the like, thing. Who knows? That's why I'm like, in the RE. That's why I'm like, I know. I'm I'm main character. Look, all right, give you that. Given you, he wrestled drunk, but ha did would you notice that? I, I would not notice that. That's he not was the, living the hangman character. No, that's the, that's I'm saying he's that's bad at his job. That I would not. I can't. I wouldn't see that. I wouldn't be yeah. able to see it. You couldn't listen, tell it apart. Listen, listen, I'm not talking about you. As the part of the job is be caring about the person I'm working with. If I can't care enough to be sober, so as why I can protect them if something goes on in the ring, I shouldn't be in the fucking ring. Period. End of discussion. All that's right, bad at your that. job. He's All bad right. at his job, so he's bad at his job. He's Jeff Hardy. You get okay. no, 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 no. no. I'm saying oh, my nigga, my nigga, Punk my nigga. You, Jeff Hardy. You, you're late. To, you're late to your job twice. Twice in no, one. No, 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 you're no. Bad at your job, my nigga. That's not no, what I said. Nigga. That's not what I said. Did I say he was late, or did I say he was showing up to work drunk? We're doing Bro. two different things. We're not. We're not comparing two the two. Two things. I are, compared. Two things are violations. Two things are violations. No, I compared. Two things are violations of your job. We're not. We're not violating You're trying to move. You're trying to move the metaphor. I'm not moving it. I'm not. We're not. We're not talking about metaphor. Because because you spread facts. It's showing up to work drunk. Good at your job or bad. If you show up to work drunk. We and your job is required safe. Is it good or bad? <laughs> Depending if you can still do no, your job. No, 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 no. That means it's bad. The fact mm. that you're putting that that caveat out there, you can't mm. say yes or no. You're saying no. it depends. It depends. Means Gino, it really but, does, but my nigga. if, if it he really does, I get Gino's point that if he's wrestling drunk, he's not. That's, you're putting it. yourself and the other person's life in danger. But if you're having flawless matches, we can't tell if you're drunk or not. But the the whole thing is, I don't know. Thing, Yo, Jeff Hardy used to have great matches high as Not well. against Sting. Remember not what right. happened in... Um, right, because... Yeah, I forgot that, the pay-per-view, but... That was, that Moxley was didn't hit the it. ceiling, bro. All them niggas hit their ceiling. Moxley you didn't never hit. saw Moxley, Moxley, Moxley go out like Jeff Hardy. You this never saw him go out like Jeff Hardy. Saying, saying he didn't go out like Jeff Hardy. He didn't go out like Jake the Snake. He didn't you go never out like... No, 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 no. But we've established already he was doing the same... We didn't even know he went to rehab to begin with. We didn't even know that. He had to tell us, like, like, yo, I'm going into rehab the day of. We didn't know that. Right, right. But all I'm saying All is, these other niggas, we literally seen these niggas on TV. No, no but this is this is what I'm saying. Is you're saying, yo, this guy was doing unsafe shit, but he was a great wrestler. And my point is, no, part of his job... You can't say... He, you can't the aspect of his job... Great wrestler in the same sentence, bro. Right, but you, you, you said that. So we agree he was bad at his job then. No, you can't say oh, unsafe man. and great wrestler in the same sentence. You just... That don't make so, sense. No, the, so, right, so what you're saying... I'm saying, saying what you're saying. No, I'm saying what you just said ma didn't make sense. Right, but that's what you're worker. saying. That's you're what saying, saying he's a good wrestler. You're saying he was bad at his job. You just said he but was wait, a hold on, time time bad at his job. And I'm saying... But time out. You can't, you can't be... So he can be unsafe and good at uh, a good wrestler? We're saying he was a good wrestler in the yeah. ring. And I'm saying if you're a good wrestler, you're more than likely safe. And you're saying if you're a good wrestler and he's unsafe. And I'm saying that don't matter. Gino, saying, think about it. We didn't no, know no, he no. went to rehab till this after. Is, this is my point. If you're showing up to work drunk where you have to help and secure someone's safety, 
and the other person's safety is kind of required on you, you know, being cognitive of things. If you're taking anything to impair your cognitiveness, you're horrible at your job. You're now saying the person who's in the ring with me doesn't deserve to have and as much of safety wouldn't as know. possible. I think the point that already no, 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 I'm not talking wouldn't about know me, it. But you're he talking about me it. as an audience versus, hey, we as adults recognizing, hey, this guy was shown to work drunk. That's bad. Not like, oh, well, he showed up to work drunk and he did a good job. Like, yo, if my school bus driver, I don't give a fuck how good of a how driver he is. Know you I don't want him drunk to work drunk. If you don't show signs that you are drunk at work is the thing. But the whole thing is. No one knew. No, no, people knew backstage. No one, no, no one knew till it was the day that he was gonna go to rehab. Like everybody else found out. I think he was a text. Did he text Tony ever something like that? Yeah, like we didn't. It was a shock to us when the news went out. I think. I think if I'm not mistaken, he said like he like he knew Renee knew. I think Tony knew. That like was, one more person. Drunk, or that he it was a shock to us. That he was going to rehab. No, no, I'm talking about every people. Well, the drinking, drink. the drinking situation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I don't. I'm not. I'm not. I don't personally know. I can only no, estimate. Thing. Nobody knew. Estimate. I that don't know, bro. He used to take day. pictures of him with the bottle, just sitting and drinking it all the time. Right, right. But my nigga, that was part of the game. But we, that's the same thing. That's the same way of looking at motherfucking um, what's his Adam name? Page? Um, no, not what's Adam Page. Oh, Stone Cold. Adam Page. Stone Cold though. It's Stone Cold with the beers, or or it's but Adam Page with the with Stone the Cold beers. never went to rehab though. It was part of their, was part Cole, of their tough Stone guy. Cole also, it was part of their tough Stone, guy gimmick. You know what I'm saying? Same Stone way we Cole look at actually admitted. Yeah, he you actually there? admitted that he rarely drank the beer in the ring. No, that's like, true. That was a, remember he said that like you were cracking. It's a part of the his mouth open, let it fall. It was at the end of the shows he'll drink it. No, I got you. I got you on that. But I'm just saying. But that, remember, image, like they were you know, gay and all of this type. Like this is part of their image as the tough guys. We drink. We, you know, right. what I'm saying. But the thing Jamis is, does the same thing, right? Now. It's their gimmick, right? But again, it's Moxley is just like this is my real life, though, my nigga. Like and, again, and that's the problem. It's we like he checked him. himself before it got right, too crazy, right? But the problem is he wrestled. He wrestled drunk. That's the problem. That, did you know that? And doesn't matter if I knew yeah, that. that's what I'm saying. That's the point. Does, though, bro. We no. wouldn't know that. So what you're saying is, I'm cool with someone doing something bad, and as long as I don't know. But once I know, I'm cool with them doing it because you know they got wait. Versus it's, it's, the it's, fact it's, of saying no, 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 like, no, no, hey, this not, person not, literally not, not, was not, jeopardizing not, people's not, health and it, health. Because you no, know, if Nia Jax was showing up to work drunk and clotheslining and elbowing, but the thing she was doing that sober. Right. No, I'm saying if she was doing that drunk, people would be fucking furious. Yeah, but she doesn't be sober. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. And that only makes Moxie sound better because he was doing this shit. He was wrestling. No, 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 no. Like, no. Ding, 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 ding. Come no, on. Because, because this is not this a good worker. Like, no, 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 no. Well, no, what I'm saying is you've already established she, she's unsafe, right? You said, like, oh, she's not good at her job because people are getting hurt with her in the ring. Right? But she already wait, has wait, that wait, stigma. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I brought her up for that purpose. I wanted you guys to say that point, to address and acknowledge, hey, we know when someone's unsafe and we don't like it. Now John Moxley's unsafe, but we like the way he wrestles. No, so my cool. nigga. That's, you what, know, you you, That's you, what you just said. That's what you just said. No, it's not no. what I just said, bro. That is exactly what I not just said. I no. literally just said, we seen her hurt people in the ring. Seen. My two eyes watching TV. Right. She her hurt Sasha. People. I remember that. <laughs> Did not see John Moxley watching TV with my two eyes hurt anybody in the ring. Have you? Ever. No, Ever. never. No. That doesn't change him from being unsafe. Case closed. The fact, the fact of the matter, he says, I wrestled people drunk. You're now unsafe. Period. End of discussion. You don't get to say, oh, I was doing everything right because this guy didn't get injured. Well, you didn't show up to work sober. Doesn't matter if you did it right or not. You 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 fucked up at the beginning. And the discussion. My nigga, Yo, I cheated on I cheated on my wife when I wore a condom. So she you know the other girl didn't get pregnant. You cheated on your wife. Yo, but I did everything right. I fucked this girl. I gave her the greatest sex of her life. Do, but do, you, you cheated on your wife. Do, do people fault Michael Jordan for shooting a foul shot with his eyes closed? No, I don't care. But was 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 would, would that be something smart to do? No. There's plenty of people who is that failed. smart basketball play? No. No, it's a hundred percent. People cheer it on. People cheer it on and make it accolades to why he's great, right? 
No, that's not one of the things they talk about. Oh yeah, Michael Jordan was shooting free throws with his so eyes closed. So they don't they don't always that's shoot the greatest throw with his eyes closed. Kobe's done it. LeBron's has done it. LeBron's missed doing yeah, it a lot too. They, and they compare it to who doing it first. Steph's done it. Plenty, I'm saying and who, they, who made it great? Uh I think it was Larry Bird who made that great, to be honest. But the yeah. fact that somebody they make it is a great thing to do, even though it's a lead is something bad. No, I'm right, and it's like if we it talk about their great hold on, hold on. If we talk about Steph Curry, the remember people are trying to make it seem like Steph Curry was like, oh yeah, Steph Curry was the greatest shooter of all time off the strength of the way the Warriors was playing ball. Mm -hmm. And it was people had to come out and say, No, no, it's because the rules changed that allowed the way he plays to be considered the norm. Because before, wow. if you're taking half court shots. With, because remember the way the hand checking was and stuff like that, a nigga could literally just push you off the shot, and that's it. Right. That's how they did Jordan. Right. So rules change, and suddenly things change. Mm -hmm. We're not. We we can't say that Jordan suddenly shooting with his eyes closed and doing stuff because that's low IQ basketball for everyone else. Is acceptable. That's still bad IQ basketball, nonetheless. We don't see Michael. Jo a lot of the stuff Michael Jordan was doing was considered bad IQ. But it worked because the nigga was fucking a freak of nature. True or false? Add to his true, greatness. True or false? True or false? It added but, to his greatness. So I want to understand, how does John Moxley showing up to work drunk wrestling people, putting them at risk, add to his greatness? No. No, 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 no. Explain no, that. No, no, explain no, no, no. that. You explain just that totally part. changed what we just said. No, because you're saying, because you're saying, like, yo. No, 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 no. no. We're said, literally just talking said, about, we're literally just talking about people Doing bad stuff and adding yeah, to the brain. He wasn't. He didn't hurt nobody. So he's a he's a good wrestler. He didn't hurt nobody. Nah, he he bro, went to his job, bad, did bad something job. bad in your eyes, and still in his own eyes good. too. He admits right. it. But right. he, he admits it. it look good. Wait, so I want to understand. But did he, admit, did he admit did he admit hurting somebody? Did he admit? Did he admit so bad at my job? I need to go to rehab. Did he admit to hurting somebody? And you never said he was well, yo, so he's bad at his great job. at his job. That's not what he's he great said. at his job. That's not what he said, bro. So why, yo, bro? If drinking is affecting my home life and my shit, and like my personal life, yes, I need to go to do work. If you, if he's going yes. to work drunk, he's going home drunk. He's spazzing drunk. The nigga, the nigga, the nigga. Listen, it's not just work, bro. That's the thing. It was his. It was his whole life, bro. I'm he not saying just his whole life, bro. right? But we're talking. I'm not talking like I don't know what he's saying to Renee. I don't know if he's going back home and challenging Renee to a th to our three falls match. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All I'm saying is he's in the ring with people who are his wife, and he's showing them drunk. That you right know, there I'm sorry, makes I'm you a <laughs> Got her in that bullet chunk. <laughs> Bro, Yo, let's, let's get out of this. Oh, sorry, <laughs> you talk about Moxley for an hour, bro. Yo, no, we yeah. have not, bro. We've talked about Moxley for like all the 10 minutes. Bro. Moxley is not that good. We ain't, we ain't oh, gotta get nah, nah. too much love. Nah, nah I ain't gonna lie. I'm ready for I'm ready to see him this 2022. I ain't gonna say I'm I ready for Kenny Omega to come back, to be honest. Ain't me too. It's like Dave. Yeah, I, I just want Kenny to come back because Kenny's probably the they're probably like their fifth or sixth best on the mic. Look, and they, they they need him there. Because the young bucks are you, know, you know what they're really missing? Don Callis. Where the fuck that nigga been? Because Kenny. He's with Kenny. He's not. Kenny's not. Don Callis, Don Callis dipped before Kenny left. Remember, he remember he popped back up for the Adam Page joint. That's why nigga was like, where the fuck? Like, yeah, that nigga, he's not. He might be going back to Impact. Who knows? I'm about to say, isn't he with Impact? Because once yeah, they I think he's still behind the scenes. scenes. Yeah, hmm? still behind the scenes, he's one of them I niggas. Yeah, once they, because I know once they closed that door, it was like, gone. Yeah. But um, all right then, man. Um, so y'all want to talk uh Royal Rumble matches, or y'all want to uh y'all want to get y'all want to get into some other shit? Damn, shit. this bitch is thick as thick mayonnaise. While we're here, let's get into some other shit. Let's get into some say, other I, shit. I remember, I remember her from the um. The Nick, I know how I use nunchucks. I'm real nice, nice, nasty. No. That's oh, the NXT word, right? right? Yeah, word. I used some nunchucks when I was sick. But yeah, I seen her on the on the chance show on the, the NXT channel. Door? Yeah, and I was like, yo, she is she is thick. Yo, WWE been signing some joints. Joint joints. Yo, joint like, joints. Like, hey, yo. 
Like, hopefully they don't all just get subjugated to being ring announcers, but man. Nah, because JoJo, JoJo carved the lane. JoJo still was cooking. Not, not, not talk about her. Charlie, too. JoJo really hurt my soul, B. Shit, I mean, I was my woman, man. We could get it. We could get into top five Royal Rumbles. Top five Royal Rumble matches, and it's just like actual, not the actual Royal Rumble matches, because it's on fire Royal Rumble. Just the pay per views. Yeah, because it's on fire joints, bro. And my, like, I already know I'm gonna have. Uh, what's my joint? Um, what was it? Triple H and Cactus Jack, Hell in a Cell. Oh, 2000, 2000. That was the uh, the street fight. Oh, that street fight. Yeah, street fight. Oh my god, that was so fire! Now I love that match right there, bro. What else was some of these joints on here? Two thousand two, man. man. Just that whole show, like you had, uh, off, you had Vince versus Ric Flair. You had The Rock versus Chris Jericho, and then you had the return of Triple H at the Rumble. Mm. Oh, we know it's another one. Chris Jericho, Chris Benoit ladder match. I think oh one. Oh, oh, one was a uh, was the last attitude. I think was it the last attitude era? Um, yeah, that was the end of a lot of attitude era shit. That was a lot of like that was the end of a lot of them shits. But that's one of my favorite joints. Um, two thousand three, too. Um, with the return of was it the return of Lesnar? No, the return of Undertaker, and then Lesnar was there too. Lesnar had to fight Big Show at the beginning of the show to get his spot, and he got number thirty. Talking about the Rumble. Well, I was just picking out yeah. actual, like That's regular matches, huge. just actual matches and shit throughout like my favorite actual matches and shit. And I was brought up like brought up like Triple H versus uh Cactus Jack Street Fight, Chris Benoit versus Chris Jericho ladder. Oh, we might be smoking that Niner pack soon. Yeah, fuck me. That's that's not surprising. But um what's enough? I actually just love the 92 rumble with um Ric Flair. Like, just that, a match. Yeah, just that, a shit, match. that shit was just some fly shit, bro. Like that really mm -hmm. was my shit. Oh, what's another one of my favorite? 2007 ones? was cool too because it had Umaga and uh, Cena that street fight where he did the STFU with the ring rope. That was fire. But no, was he not? Bro, what is your actual like? Not like I'm that was not a different about. Cena though. That was a different Cena to be honest. I'm trying to. I'm trying to find like. Cena. Hmm? I'm trying to see actual. You talking about matches? Matches? I yeah. said 2004 yeah. with, with Benoit. That story they told with Benoit, how he was like the number one. And then he was he had Big Show over the ring and that whole struggle from them five minutes of him pulling Big Show down, dope story, dope master. That, I think that was the first Royal Rumble that I seen that had um they were creating storylines for WrestleMania. That was the first Rumble that I seen that did that shit, like the match. I'm trying to think. What was another fire joint? I can't think. There's really some dope, like little random, like Royal Rumble matches and shit. Was it? Was Taker RVD at the Rumble? No, that was Vengeance. I was dragging the nigga. It was like, I'm kicking RVD's ass. <laughs> Yo, we don't give we don't give heel biker Taker. I do. Nigga, do the build up with Flair. We fucked up David Flair. Yo. Get that man his fucking applause. He was on his <laughs> fucking bag, yo. Like really whooping niggas' asses. Like he was like, "Wake up, boy! I'm kicking your ass." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. not to, like Gina. What's some of your favorite? Like, like not like not the thirty man rumble matches. Like, what's some of y'all? Can we? I want to talk about that next week. What's some of your actual like just Royal Rumble like card matches that mm -hmm. y'all? What's some of y'all favorites? It's so many that's like just random. I think a lot of those end up being for like I'll be real. Like I was I think we were talking about this earlier. Like the Royal Rumble never was I think also, yeah, we were talking about it earlier. Like as a kid, those the Royal Rumble, Super SummerSlam. The Royal Rumble SummerSlam was a fire pay-per-view for the most part. No way out. No way out. No mercy. Unforgiven. Like the winter, the winter pay-per-views were wild. All, all the fourth quarter joints. Yeah, they were wild in the fourth quarter. Because that's mm -hmm. when like Niggas was like, yo, everyone who was gone for the early part of the year came back. Like, niggas was like, yo, I'm taking my break now. All right, take your break because you're not going to be a mania. <laughs> I was like, niggas was gone. But you'll be at SummerSlam. It's yo, they'll come back right like the, the month they knew, the, like the Raw or the, the SmackDown, either right before or right after mania. Like, oh my God, it's Sammy's back. And it's like, he's going to be at mania. Unless you're Triple H. Yeah, Triple H. 
But then Triple H only had one real pop that I can remember when niggas was like, holy shit. That's the one. The That's leather the with one. the leather, the leather jacket with the denim vest over it. Well, he came back. That was in the garden, I think, too. Yeah, that's when he that's when he de debuted the um time to play the game music. Mm -hmm. That was that because remember before that he had is this thing on the cerebral assassin. That shit was oh lit. my god. That was better than that. That was they they made that shit Stephanie theme, and I was like, that's disrespectful. They you don't give that to man. her. Yo, man. I'm trying to see some more other joints they have. Was um was Triple H and no no not Triple H um. There was a there was like a last man. Oh, Triple H and Shawn Michaels. I was gonna say um, three uh, stages of hell. Royal Rumble. Was that was a Royal Rumble. That was Royal Rumble two thousand two. No, three, three. Wait, which was the Rumble with Rey Mysterio? Which one did he win? Oh six. He won the Rumble, right? He won the Rumble after Eddie died. Oh, <laughs> they tried to use that shit. No, they did because after Eddie died, Eddie died in 05, and Ray, right after he died, Ray pretty much had to. The best career moments in WWE. Damn, man. Because they put, remember, they put the title on him. They made him a strong champion. Shout out, made, Ray. He on the cover of the new WWE game. Oh, yeah, because this is, I think this is going to be his last few years. And they don't want him to jump ship to AEW. If he jumps ship know, to AEW. That nigga jumped jump, jump ship from New Japan to AEW to back to WWE. That nigga was the first, he was in the first AEW show before they even was AEW. That nigga, that nigga jumps, you the first nigga to jump ship from AEW to WWE. That nigga was an all in. Nah, you sure Ray Mysterio was? He was. He was supposed no. to be in a match with uh, it was supposed to be Pentagon. Him. No, it was supposed to be him, Kota Ibushi, and somebody else versus the Young Bucks and somebody else. And then they was like, "I'm going to WWE." <laughs> yeah, he didn't wrestle. I'm going to train my son. Yeah, and then he. Because I remember, I was like, I don't think he was in AEW. Mm -hmm. He was in the in the in the tester show. He was supposed he to be in the tester the, show. The run was he had he was in he was a, he had did he had did Wrestle Kingdom that top of the year. Mm -hmm. I think he was doing some dates at um in England with uh with uh, WCPW. Oh, shit. they tied he, it he, up when he first started coming around with the goat um mm -hmm. moniker on his shit. Then he yeah. got booked for All In, and then that's when he went back to WWE. Right, he looked a lot bigger too. Right, yeah. He looked, he looked a little more. A lot, people, a lot of people was like mad about that because it was like, wasn't this nigga like contracted? This, this nigga said, Peace. nope. Because it's like I don't have this is this y'all gonna cut me anyway. I'm gonna be real, and this is uh, as much as y'all love like Tony Khan and the Mrs. Like, Look, I don't want that nigga. Fuck him in the Jaguars. He, 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 he probably didn't trust a new company that much. He'd rather go back yeah. to somewhere he was comfortable. And I'm Fuck him in the Jaguars. It's just, it, this is this is real talk. If you get told, hey, you come here and put your kid on TV, we're gonna make him a champion, guaranteed. We're gonna make sure he goes down the same legacy book, and it's like my kid, your kid who's been here. He's already, been, he's already on our TV. He's a legend already because they had the custody match with you and with you and Eddie. The custody match, custody match, the Dominic. Custody? I thought you said custody. The I match. You of said custody. Oh, sorry. Yo. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my god. Yo, can I get gunshot? Yo, my yeah, yo. shit, dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. I thought you said custody, big dog. Wildin', bro. Wildin', bro. It's a sick so, Negro. It's so, a sick Negro. <laughs> so, anyway, sick what I was saying was, uh, you, you you put that out there. It's hard for you to say, like, yo, hey, come wrestle, come wrestle over here and lose to the Young Bucks. He ain't gonna lose to the Young Bucks either. Oh yeah, he's, 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 he's golden. golden. He was losing that match. No, nah, he. I honestly think he was gonna win that shit. Yeah, when they, and they had Kota Ibushi on his team. Yeah, they were definitely gonna. They were definitely winning that match. Nah, the Young Bucks don't let. They don't let better wrestlers beat them. They definitely let. They definitely let them beat them. Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi beat them. Nah, but I don't think if Rey Mysterio was there, they was letting that happen. Tell me, I'm but, pretty sure. Look, the Young Bucks. Look, this is this how it is. Rey Mysterio leaves WWE and goes AEW. Do you know all the high flying Mexican motherfuckers are freaking out, bro? He already. Yeah, think about it, bro. He he was he wasn't in WWE for years when he was about to go to WWE. I mean, when he was about to go to AEW, him yeah. going back to WWE was his first time back in some time. 
Right. And what I'm saying is there's a reason why they went hard to keep him from AEW. All the, the that's trip, he goes there, triple A, all the Mexican wrestlers, all the Mexican ligas, all the Spanish leagues are Rey Mysterio. Didn't he, the, didn't he, up, he was in Lucha Underground. Right, right. What I'm saying is Rey Mysterio, Rey Mysterio solidifies your league to all Spanish audiences, flat out. Nigga, what? Bro, what? Like, like fucking Umberto Galsa and Dale. What's the what's the boy? What's the what other Dale nigga? Guys, what other yo. nigga name? Carrillo. Yo, my man, that guy. Listen, oh, boy, keep it a buck. Keep it a buck, Loso. Them niggas. Ray Mysterio pop up on the program since WCW days. Ray Mysterio pops up on the program. Suddenly, That's my you, know, bag. you know, all Spanish people be kind of leaning in a little bit harder. Like, is that we right? fuck with Eddie back in the day in WCW? Super tough, more. super tough, super tough. But don't even front though. Eddie was uh, Eddie was fire. He was Ray when he had the little Fubu jumper and shit like that. He's like, that no. was nice, nigga. That oh, was that niggas wild and him and you was that yo, it was like, yo, yo, that nigga wild. Fubu jumper at nah. Yeah, I, that's the crazy thing. I like was really introduced into like Filthy animals. Yeah, bro. Like I seen Eddie was a member. Mask. Like I ended up going back and watching share. They would show clips yeah. or whatever, but. When I seen that nigga, that was that dated. Oh, that yeah, that was Ray nice. Mysterio with the but then, I remember Ray Mysterio. Like, like, and he was was that right, I, I remember like Ray from the West Side. <laughs> I remember Ray always masked up, and I remember seeing like, what the fuck? But then this is what I'm saying. So like, when when I remember when Ray came to WWE, it was. I remember people who were WWE WWF diehards, and they heard of Ray Mysterio. They was like. I was I was one of those. That's I the that, only person I, I watch on WCW. His first match he's... was against Kurt Angle. They gave him a machine first, and, and they chemistry over the years was amazing. They wild amazing out. chemistry they wild out. bro. Him versus Big Show is always a top five match. But uh, but yo, let's uh, keep it a buck. Go ahead. Yo, you don't front. Remember um, the Great Khalid popping that nigga's great <laughs> spin out blood. That was the downfall of that nigga's career. Nah, that wasn't the downfall of his career. That was the downfall of that. When he won the world title and then Cena won it the same night off of him. That was the downfall of his oh career. Oh my god. That's when that nigga looked like, damn, the push is over. They really don't like me, man. My, my shit. Nah, really but yo, dope. you got yo, real talk, Ray Mysterio. It's as over. As much it's as people over. look. It's over. Do like, you think god, it, when Flash it, became leader of the group and shit if I heard me? <laughs> Damn, it's so <laughs> Yo. And then he came back with his son, like, how does it feel to be me? Son. <laughs> Come on, y'all know I know that movie like the back of my head. Bro, look. These is my joints. Ray Mysterio goes, goes to AEW and signs with AEW. He is so Gary. No, 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 no. I'm saying, no, I'm saying, just say this happens, right? He go, he go, he like back in the day, like, he's one of the day one signings. Him and Jericho, right? Those are because think about it like this: Ray Mysterio there. Oh, he's definitely getting the title. He's getting the title. He's the he's either the third or the fourth champion, for sure, for sure. Like I think if in between Moxley signing and like that, he would have been one of those champions in between. He would been the him and him and Chris Jericho probably would have torn down the house. Mm -hmm. No, I'm lying. They wouldn't have let Jericho and him go out. No, nah, they wouldn't let him I, I think that. so. I think so. Just because, you know, they would have did some old WCW. No, 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 no. No, no nah, they're not going to let. WCW is not supposed to look good in, in WWE's eyes. I'm they're not going to let him do that. I'm no, I'm you. saying right now. They, the reason, No, no, no. The reason why they wouldn't do that is because as much as, as shitty as this sounds, Le Champion, yeah, that was a great, great run for him. Mm -hmm. He would have had a shitty match with fucking Rey Mysterio at the age. That's tough to say because nah, Ray, Ray's lost a step and he's lost a step. But a lot of I agree with that. I agree with that sentiment. But is maybe it's because me seeing like his match with Andrade and seeing me seeing like Chris Jericho matches with Orange Cassidy and being Young highly people. impressed with those, right? Young people, and that's where I say where it's like with Ray is like he still has a little bit of that in him, where it's like he can still. Give them that speed and like you know what I'm saying. They're both good, like you know what I'm saying, minds creatively in the ring. So it's like I would like to, but I do agree with you. They do both have left, you know, lost a step in this shit. We have seen the botches and shit like that where we used to see these. Like these was the guys that the last thing you would expect. You know what I'm saying? Well, not so much Ray. He was always reckless sometimes. That's the that's 
one would take a risk though. But that's neither. That's a, I think that was enough wrestling talk for today. Yeah, <laughs> hey man, it's that time, man. It was almost it was almost mania season. Yeah, man. I thought we was gonna cook the Titans at some point. We wearing our Bengal colors. Oh, I mean. Ooh. I mean, once again, we already know they are the most overrated team in the NFL. We gotta like that pack for them. Oh, it's already rolled. We gotta like that. You know what I'm saying? Really? I got the stripes. I'm just man, si- got the I'm orange just, on. Just, it. Gino just, got the tight and blue on. I'm just sealing the gaps up, just like how they did on that two point conversion when they blocked uh, Derrick Henry. Yo, and the Packers the might be turning short, into a pack too. Remember that <laughs> the Niners just blocked the punt and they brought it back for a touchdown. They just tied the game up. I'm about, to, I'm about to pull this shit up on my, on my phone for my watch and do the shit. But but yeah, man, I'm I'm interested in for tomorrow's game. Um, but when it's come out, it'll be today. Whatever, whatever. I'm but, rooting for you, niggas. You will never hear me I, say I, that, but I'm rooting I'm for y'all. I'm not go cat, bro. I'm, I, I mean, I'm for the, versus the Chiefs. I'm rooting for the Bills because I want to see them go over, get over that hump. Like seeing what Stephon Diggs like last year, while standing out watching the crowd and knowing like that they almost could have. You know they got And like I told I told my Dukes today. Forget that game of the regular season. Like the Chiefs, did, win? did the Bills win that game? I believe so. I believe so. I'm not. I don't remember. Me, I can look it up. But I just, still, I still said, forget that game. Of the oh, no, they season. did. They killed them. It was on Sunday Night Football. Yep. They killed them. I remember that. And I said, forget that game though, because the Chiefs of the uh, how the Chiefs started their season is not the way they ended their season. Facts. It's a different you feel team. Me? They it's back to the same team. ways. So remember them how they were in the playoffs last year. That's what you get. Team you prepare for. You feel me? And Mahomes, it, it, that's him. Mahomes, he that nigga. He's he, he's him. And he's still carry. Exactly. So it's like I just had like yo, forget that shit and be prepared. Like I like they got hyped after the first one as they should, man. Like it's, they, Buffalo is a hype city, man. They like, fucking destroyed y'all. I'd be hyped too. And I think it's like no, I mean that was a rivalry game, so I understand that. But I'm talking about last year. It was just they were happy to be winning the first round. I'm like, yo, y'all know who y'all got next, so just chill and be ready for that. You know, low key, Allen, he's the best quarterback in the playoffs so far. Him and Joe Burrow. I mean, Brady, over Brady. Brady, Brady, Brady played one game, bro. So I'm, I'm just, I'm, but just eye test, eye test. I'm talking about the eye test. It's all good, bro. I ain't mad at that. One nigga had a perfect game. Joe Burrow. You know what I'm saying? Well, but Joe Burrow got sacked nine times. What the fuck? I'll wait for you to say that. (laughs) (laughs) You to say that. He won the game. That old man got sacked nine times. I literally seen the where what was it? I think it was like right. the nigga just literally ran directly. Like nobody touched this nigga. Nah, he, he won the game, game dog. That's like, that don't matter. That's that's shit empty stats, empty calories. That, like, that game was beautiful because it was all defense, all defense, and I was just like, yes. Derrick Henry got a touchdown. There's so a turn. Awesome. They made that. They got. They stopped that nigga on the one yard line. Oh, I love it! Every time they stopped him, I loved it. I was like, that Super Bowl that they lost when it was one yard short. Where all that King Henry shit at, nigga? Right. That nigga's a fucking. What what they call them niggas? The uh, the Jokers. Oh, he he's a he's not a Titan. You ain't a pimp. You a fairy. (laughs) You ain't a pimp. You a fairy. (laughs) I got the Buccaneers winning tomorrow, and I got the Bills winning tomorrow, just for chaos purposes. (laughs) I want to see I want to see Breeze versus Brady to see Joe cry again, and I would like Rogers. Rogers, he retired. Breeze. No, I said I want to see Joe cry. No, but you said you want to see Breeze versus Brady. Oh, sorry. Uh, look at look Brady at did retire Breeze. Brady excommunicating Rogers out of the conversation like most people do. They but tied up right now. He looking like a pack. He, he looking pack, like a pack. Go. go pack. Go. Go pack. Go. <laughs> <laughs> But not. Nah, I, I mean, like I said, it, the NFC always usually got good games. Like this, this was a good week for, week for playoffs. I ain't think oh, they got the ball, and it's under a minute left. Let me see the, the, the Niners. Let me tune in. Let me tune in. But um, yeah, it's been a good. This has been a good um divisional. I'm not even gonna hold you, man. This this first um day, I'm a, I gotta work tomorrow, so I'm gonna be watching that shit at work. <laughs> so it is. What it is. Well, I'm gonna be. You getting my braids did tomorrow, so I'll be. Watching. My sister was supposed to come over tonight. You know, rest do my shits, but. 
about to look like Kawhi up in this moment. Nah, I mean not Kawhi. Maybe uh uh Anthony Anderson and Malibu's most wanted when he got the fake braids. I think I'm about to get the uh if if, if it might get to try to get the joint side to side joint. Power smokes. That's what they call them. The twenty, the twenty twenty Geechee, the early twenty twenty Geechee. <laughs> I seen, I, mean, well, I seen a pic. I just happened to see a picture with um. Oh, can you hear that? Oh, yeah. Joe Buck is gonna sue us. <laughs> but nah, um, I do. I did watch it. Um, I seen a picture with uh, Georgia Smith and uh, Brent Fias, and I seen it. And they were clean. I was like, oh yeah. Um, I'll be what? In the studio? Oh no, no, no. It, was a, it must have been a picture from when they did their last song. Oh, okay. That nobody but you record, but yeah. But speaking of music, let's get into this new Shay Noir yeah. album, man. Hey. Let's talk about it, man. Shay Noir, food for thought. We've been waiting for this for a minute. Yo, Since call this nigga Noir. Drake. This nigga Joe. Sorry, Joe. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I know. He- well, he might be stressing a little bit. Let's let's wait to let's give him a minute. Yeah, this, this, this game I have. We don't to talk about nothing else right now. But Joe, we want we want the Niners to win for chaos purposes, brother. I've been finding this hilarious, but Tory Lane's album, the Alone at Prom, they starting to delist songs from it because he hasn't he ain't clear his samples. Yeah, I think what? Madonna was the first one. I mean, Madonna was the first one to shoot at him. Enchanted Chanter Waterfall's gone. And that's my shit, my nigga. Yo, I, I was tight, bro. They I took it out. Tight. No, they didn't take it out. Yes, they so did. Like, well, Spotify, they did on Spotify. So long. oh, you need that? You niggas need Apple. That's why. Oh no, it just didn't happen for you yet. Yeah, it just they, didn't happen for you yet. That's your. She's getting that until she gets that. No, I, I think it was um George Michael's. I think who did it? Uh, George Michael. Okay. Yeah. Hey, whatever. Well, was probably Amazon music. music. That was probably you the know, late. Check my Amazon Music. And I still got title too. Yeah, I got. I can. Yeah. We I, do. We do it up over here. N- niggas need Apple. That's what it is, bro. Uh, you know, you know when when all else fails, I can still download music, nigga. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No, uh-huh. in my forecast, I give Ari three months. And uh-huh. an iPhone. I can still download albums, nigga. Three months, <laughs> niggas don't have an I iPhone. Still know the sites. <laughs> You better have an iPhone. I bet, in three months, you, I bet you ended up forgetting all of your little downloading sites, didn't you? I got I, I got a favorite section. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But nah, son. Um, yeah, I feel, I feel. I ain't gonna say I feel bad because I mean it's like nigga dealt with this shit during the chicks tape era, so it's like you know what it you, is. You kind of know better, <laughs> so not really too sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like I was, you know I, was I was hoping you were out of this fucking like this shit where you was getting your clearances and shit, nigga. The sample shit is your bag, so why are you not doing that shit, my nigga? Like. <sighs> It sucks, bro. It sucks, but he knew what he was with that one. You know what I'm saying? But and they, neither here nor there, man. Let's talk about somebody who produce who produces some of their own shit. You know what I'm saying? Who really don't got to worry about a lot of that shit. Right. You know I mean? But um, Shane Noir, man, food for thought. Um, this is what the first the first release of Trust of the Year of the Year, yeah. yeah um, this is coming off of her uh, last project, which was After Twelve. Great project. Great I, that was like my my major introduction to Shay was through that project. For sure, yo. I mean, man, what what can, how how do we start this joint, man? Um, I mean, first night I listened. I mean, I was it was a dope listen first night. I ain't gonna lie. The skits in like her, just like the like just her talking throughout the joint was the first thing that kind of gravitated towards me first because it's like me kind of get more in tune to her as a person. You know what I'm saying? You can kind of get in tune to a person through their lyrics and such like that, but when somebody's just like speaking and just like just giving their testimony or whatever, it's a different kind of synergy. Yeah, it's just a different connection. Like you're just like you're just literally giving me your testimony. You're really just letting me know who you are. You know, straight up and straight up and through, no metaphors or nothing. You know what I'm saying? And that was the intro. You would that that was the um. Part let me get to the album. These niggas got eat to live. You eat to live, and she was just saying things. How she would just correlate and having how just. Continue to feed your mind with new information and, you know what I'm saying, all of that nature, you know what I'm saying, continue to just evolve mentally is, you know what I'm saying, food for thought, you know what I'm saying, and eating to live and just continuing to, you know what I'm saying, find more, you know what I'm saying, things to continue on and live. And I just love how she correlated those things, you know what I'm saying? With the song titles, too. Like, there's all, like, yeah. food-related, dinner-related shit. Wow, I don't, I don't even think about that. 
Yeah, ladies brunch, gold cutlery, brains for dinner. Ooh, like, table for three. Yo, that's crazy. I, I be high as fuck when I be let's watch commute. Uh, man. Man, that's fire. That's fire. shout out to her because I'm pretty sure she had most of the hand in sequencing this this album too. So that's a dope catch. Um, that's crazy. That's one thing I was thinking about a lot during this joint. Like, who sequenced this shit, bro? All right, but um, but yeah, so like this joint for sure. Um, let me go to the two screens real quick. Uh, no, I don't want to kick them. There we go. But uh, yeah. So start with "Eat to Live." The intro, very. Um, I kind of gave you, like I said, the theme of what we're talking about. Like for for me, we're really getting more in tune to her mental, her mm -hmm. mental, where her mental thoughts, where she is, and all of that such. And you go into the next um, record, "Split the Bread." Oh. Dope record. Oh my, the cuts on that record are. Fan. The my favorite bar of the album is on that record. What was it? Um, the Judas bar, where if you put the bread, you know who's Judas, some type of shit. But you also know in the Last Supper, he split the bread with with Jesus, and that's mm -hmm. it. Oh man, she was cooking on that joint, man. And then you go to Eat to Star with Jinx. Yo, cooked. He cooked on that verse, and I was crazy, and I just followed him. Like Joe is pissed right now. I bet he is. The Packers just lost. Goal. They got the field goal. The Packers just lost. Go back, go. Go back, go. Get I out of here. I Brady didn't even have to eliminate him. Baby Brady did. Damn. Son, the Niners. Ba you let baby Brady beat y'all? Damn, son. Go pack, go. Smoke, Holy pack, shit. Smoke. smoke, pack, smoke. Mm -mm -mm. They sent them niggas packing that. Yo, the Niners, the Niners, listen, man. Hey, 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 send Joe the link. Oh no, you know he getting the link. So, um, but back to the um, back to what we were saying though. Back to the album. Either star, like I said, they both went up in that joint. Jinx seven one six. Like I said, just followed them yet last year. Just trying to get more in tune with like a lot of more artists. Like I said, the city is bubbling right now. And he's from out Niagara Falls, and it's dope just because we need more people from out there to start getting their shit bubbling and shit too. Because you want to see all the upstate, you know what I'm saying? But that was another dope record. Um, the Daily Bread skit, we go into that next, where I mean, we all remember that motherfucking shit, the Daily Bread prayer, and all of that. Shit. I, I went to mm -hmm. a Catholic school as a kid in elementary, so I remember that. Shit I so ate at somebody's cool. house, and I did that, we did it at their house. Yeah, we had to say that shit uh, before lunch. The whole fucking daily bread prayer and shit. So that shit, I remember that that shit reminded me of school and just being a kid and like I said, growing up Catholic and all that shit. But bless the food. That yeah, was we start that one. Like that was that one. Let me go on and play that one real quick. Well, my 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 joint is the one that comes right after. Oh, okay. No, we I feel you. Oh, okay. You know. She be rapping, bro. What she like, and this is this what? is the thing too. Her delivery, like it's her delivery, like it's that, like and no disrespect to her, is that scruffy? That that, that, that kind of like that. That I love that. You know, you know who she gives me vibes of? It gives it shows. It sounds like that grit. You know what I'm saying? It's she like, gives me great Kwan. Voice, voice, voice. No, just the voice. Hmm. Like that scruff, kind of like that, that, that grit is the grit. More spec, if anything. Definitely not you, God. Let's not, let's not do that. But it ain't no, neither here nor there. She has, she has a great pocket. You know what I'm saying? 
she has a great pocket that she, her flow she gets it well i'm saying a great pocket she gets in different pockets at that that's yeah, a, yeah she can get in there she showed that on a lot of these different records too you know what i'm saying like one of my favorite lines she had on here too was what she said um great what's that great sex and great what's that great sex and great work or some shit like that i i, I don't got time it shows that I, I can't get rest or some shit. i forgot what the line it was so cold bro it was such a cold slick line that she it, you could a man or woman could say it you know what she's I'm talking saying? about real shit too that's another thing like she's talking like i know in after 12 oh in God. the intro not the intro but in after 12 i think it was cruise control where she was talking about she she had a dude who she like built up and then he let like they broke up like she's talking about she talking about that shit in, in this joint too i think it's um is it i think it's communion i'm a i'm we gonna play two song two more songs off this joint you know what i'm saying and then we you know what i'm saying we we can take talking but um next song i want to go into is ladies brunch this is the song of the album for me now as soon as i heard this i think this and table for three for me I like this more than table for three. It's it's six spitters if you, you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. All like all, they all spat on it. And that's a fact. I, I give you that's a fact. They all spat on it. Pause. That's a fact. Oh, no. <laughs> Yo, relax. But, um, Yo. Wow, you wow, horny bro. Where's the horny, horny police? Me neither. But, no, um, yo, hold on. <laughs> ladies brunch, man. This was oh my god, bro. This is just shows like why Griselda and Trust, like they got some heavy hitters, mm -hmm. ladies, man. Well, Griselda, Trust, and fucking drum work. Let's let's keep it, you know, what I'm saying all the way through. But let's go into this record, man, because.
All the love to Shay. All the love to Shay. Great project. Dope song. She had a great verse. The Close Your Eyes line was fire. She got eight twice on this record. You like Armani verse over Shay verse? I don't know. Because Armani know. was, she was barking too. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is love got the best words. No, of course, yeah. Love, love needs to. You know what I'm saying? I need to see more. Well, she's gonna be in. Um, you, gotta, you gotta check. She dropped something last year. She just didn't put it on stream at first. I was, oh. say, I was just about to. I was just about to say that. Please go check out her last year. I think she ended up putting it on. Um, did she put it on there? Is this it? The self love? No, I, I don't think this is it. Might no, I don't think it's the self love joint. It's might be on uh, self love. Like, yeah, self love is on. It's on not, um Apple. I, did she drop some twenty? I think she dropped some twenty twenty one. But I think she put it on like um Audio Mac. That's where I see. That's where I listen to it on. Uh, I might be wrong. But um, she definitely got some music. But I just I can't wait for like her actual like project project to come out because that I'm gonna be. Front and center for that motherfucker, yo. Look at how Shay's cooking with trust, putting out projects, quality right. projects. I'm interested to see. Like I know we talk about Shay, but I just want to, because we don't talk about love enough. And dog, like just the little connections she's been like showing that she has. I can't wait to see like some of the music she pops up with, because it's, it's not just gonna be hard rap shit. She's gonna give us like some like dope R and B shit type mm -hmm. shit too. Like what she multifaceted, does, like. The one thing that Shay brought up, like on the Jinx record, like her label, at the, if I think that she either has or is creating Poet Society, what you can understand, in which for a lot of her music, she's she sounds like she is a poet. Like she, you know what I'm saying? Like those interludes were spoken word. Right. She's a poet. She's a rapper also. And I think the people she puts it to her, like with love and, you know what I'm saying? So like that, these are same people too. You know what I'm saying? And I think Jay Skis also, like, you know what I'm saying? Like minded are, people. Yeah. These are poets that are just become rappers also you know what i'm saying and i think i just i'm just so we are i'm grateful to just be listening to these guys in the beginning stages you know what i'm saying they are great at these stages mm -hmm. are we able to see them progress more you know what i'm saying but this record fire it just shows i i need an ep with these three too give me an ep with these three man, you know what i'm saying man. Man, i see it, yeah, I see it you put it you put it on ig man that that's yeah. right shout out seven she um she uh reposted it and such because that shit is true man we need that shit but um, we get into the next record, Praises, which I thought was another dope record, man. Like, just a lot of records she just letting off on, man. Like, that was a dope joint. Table for Three, that was a um, single record. And they, I like her verse. I'll say I like her verse on here more than I do on Ladies Brunch. Ah, uh, yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Because in the very next record, Rome took over Gold Cutlery. I mean, Rome, Rome is another nigga that we need to shout out. Rome, more. Rome was only on the hook. He didn't take over. He wasn't rapping on that too. I could swear he was only on the hook. He ain't got a verse. But shout out to him because he he the Griselda stamp. Yeah. I love this song though because it reminds me of just like some old '90s shit. Just that an old '90s, 90s movie. I'm like a Yeah, man. 
this, that was a dope record. That joint, did she go into the hard brains for dinner when she's like, let me just, let me just gonna get on some straight rap rap shit with y'all for mm-hmm. real. That shit was hard. I love the water to wine skit too, though. That whole from the grape to the being crushed and being picked into, you know what I'm saying? All of that shit, like that analogy. And being, communion goes into that's the 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 wine. Is my second favorite record of the song. Cause dog. It's a dope closer. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, man. Like that's that was a great closer for the shit, bro. Like once again, it goes all into like I said, vulnerability. She's talking about everything on this album from her being at a friend's house and you know what I'm saying the dude her brother coming here trying to touch her or fucking you know what I'm saying just uh her and her you know what I'm saying relationship you know what I'm saying the ups the obstacles of that and you know what I'm saying her childhood and you know what I'm saying moving from you know what I'm saying probably from Niagara from Niagara Falls to Buffalo and things like that and just so many different things of her life she gave to us on this album. And I feel like she's be, she's getting more well rounded which is being able to be fire with the bars but also being able to you know what I'm saying be more introspective for like a better you know what I'm saying about you know what I'm saying life and everything that's going around you know even from COVID lines to you know what I'm saying lines about you know what I'm saying the betterment of our people so many things she can get into she can get into straight v- shit. vulnerability bro and then the versatility and, and, versatility and, and, and vulnerability yeah and, and intelligence too like she's a she's a very intelligent one for the things she talk about you know what I'm saying like I can see that she's very in tune to her surroundings, you know what I'm saying? So it's great to get so many things like that from her. And we can get the slick shit, too. It's not like she just don't talk about, or that she talk about, she talk about, you know what I'm saying, getting cute and, you know what I'm saying, and, you know what I'm saying, getting, you know what I'm saying, getting sex. Like, she talk about all of this shit. She talk about all of that shit. So it's like, that's why I was like, I feel like I, I really don't miss on anything when I'm listening with Shay. You know what I'm saying? She give me a little bit of everything. You know what I'm saying? That's why I like that she, when she, this is another product of just growth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think, I mean, <sighs> I still think after 12 is like front to back fire. No, nah, there's no, I don't mind that. This, but that's the thing. We That's the thing we need to talk about. Her catalog is really, really fucking amazing, yo. Like, let's talk, let's just talk about that real quick. From, she got that project with Apollo Brown, too, as from, God intended. Like, from Thriller to Hunt to, to, to Food for Thought, bro, she got heat, bro. Like, any of you, you know. Yeah, from even if you don't want to count the first thriller hunt, thriller to hunt two is fucking crazy, bro. Like, cause this is when she first started linking with Thirty Eight Special. Then you go into Juno and shit. Like I said, Juno was the step out joint. Then you go in, as God intended, which was like I said, a lot of art, real like real real introduction for me as a full project. As you say, after twelve was, and I think just continuing like it's so many great projects that she have. That is like that has to start being talked about, not even with just women, just in rap in general. And her doing her own production, albeit not all of it, but she still yeah. has her a, a big portion of her projects are produced the by. That she did was good. The beats that she did was good. Yeah, self sufficiency that's important. Exactly, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Diversity of shit. You know what I'm saying? Being controlling mm-hmm. more of the music, for sure, for sure, man. Shout out to Shay for this album. Definitely was waiting for this show, man. This was a great for album. Sure. Um, not much else to say, man. Like I said, can't, give us can't wait for more, you know what I'm saying, in the future. But this, letting this roll out, man, this is starting off for me in a rap, in a rap you know, department, you know what I'm saying, between, I, this is probably my favorite pr- project right now in the rap department. You know what I'm saying? I can say uh, what's dropped so far? Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, okay. Magic. Magic started the year? Kinda, because it came out on Christmas. Yeah, it's Chris last year, nigga. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Because she, nothing major really came out. Yeah, we had, we had Jones. This. Um. Well, I still didn't listen. I still gotta listen to. Um. Still gotta listen to what's his name? Uh, Corday's album. I still have to listen to Corday's album. I didn't get a chance to uh, spin that through yet. So, that's another thing. And I still gotta uh, finish listening to Gunna's album. Mac Hami dropped a uh, project this weekend too. Um, yeah, Dollar Menu it. with yeah. God Fahim. Fire, 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 fire record. I think I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play one of uh, the records on there for my wave. Yeah, let's go add Gino back into this joint real quick. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Why go on? Welcome back. What's going on? What's going on? Why go on, Brad Man? I had to take care of something real quick. Well, I'm back now. Yeah, maybe we're just talking about uh, some um, music and shit real quick. Some new um. 
New album, you know what I'm saying? Shay Noir. Shout out to the town, you know what I'm saying? Buffalo shit. But um, she just had, a great uh, and all. R&B shit come out too. We had, uh, what's his joint name? Uh, Amber oh, Mark dropped yeah, a little two pack on uh, on Apple. It was one of them Apple home sessions shit. I played the Jack James record last, last pod. That was kind of like that. It was where they do covers of records. Mm-hmm. Um and Spotify it, does that too. Yeah, they did that. I think yeah, uh, Ubion did uh Untitled, and I think like I think uh what's his name? Lucky Day did one. A couple of I think I found the Lucky Day one. Lucky Day one, I like that one too. But um, some- the first record is called Worth It. The second record is called is a, a remake of the Gautier record the somebody I used to know. Mm-hmm. I was oh. gonna play, I was gonna play it. Um you, you gonna say something? I was gonna say, um, Joint does just drop Brian Devon back in the streets. He's been pumping out a lot of fucking music, yo. Like he's been dropping- nigga, you don't even know what he's dropping. Bro, he's he had at least three projects within the last two years, bro. Between I, mean, I think in the last three years, he's dropped at least one one or two projects. That's because the IRS on the door. <laughs> Stupid <laughs> the last year he had to join with Apollo Brown, speaking of um the that joint, which was fire. And now he's back with um B B B Boy Soul. I'm I'm not I'm not, I'm not too privy to this. Um, yeah, I'm not too privy to this, produ- to this producer. But the the songs on here are nice, dog. Like um, actually, I think I might play one of them as my wave. Um, I'm I'm mad because I was gonna play, I should have played Communion. But Communion, I was gonna play that, but I was gonna play that while we was playing. But I think I played too many songs already. But Communion is enough. Oh, then I hold I I I'll hold the, the Amber Joint thing. They are gonna get us off everywhere. They keep playing music. No, no, no. We're gonna play our fucking waves. I was gonna say I was gonna play communion as my wave, but I really want to play this Raheem Devon. But no, nah, he got a lot of good joints out here. But this Raheem Devon is always a good go-to when you just want to hear some good R and B. Like he's always a go-to when you feel like R and B is getting two different mini pockets or whatever. Raheem Devon is just that smack back to reality. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like he can go on some like rap shit and he can give you some dope R and B joint. He can give you the raw soul and all of that shit, dog. But that drop, um, an artist I'm new to, L-U-J, L-U-J, I don't know how to say his name, L-U-J, L-U-J or something like that. But his he got an album out called Circumvent, which is pretty nice. Um, Votto um, dropped the project, a good project. I gave it a spin. This shit is fire. Vado, Vada or Vado, Vado, like formerly Cameron. Mm-hmm. He put out he put out something fire. Um, another joint art. Um, Aunt Clemens foreplay. I oh, said a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that's the that's an hours joint. Yeah, I really gotta listen to that joint, bro. I listen to that one, boy. I tell you, boy. I was playlist. I tell you, boy. I think I added one of them songs to it. <laughs> but I had a song from that Raheem Devon joint too. But other than that, man, let's get into the waves. Oh, Ooh. Griselda playlist out now. Go download that on Apple. Get your bars on oh. sponsored. Oh, that's, I am. I'm ready. I'm in tune to this. If you check out um, Mary J. Blige, she dropped the what's it called? Oh my god! That good morning, gorgeous. <laughs> and my fucking with Davies. Nah, the tracklist. I ain't listen to the record, but that tracklist looking type right. Oh, what it look like? Anderson Pack on there. Davies. Um, Usher. And I think it's a couple names I heard. Davies' I'm, record is random. I'm I'm really interested to hear what her and Anderson Pack um, put together. I'm really interested to see what that sound like. But um, yeah, man, let's get into the waves though. Um, One of y'all can go first because I'm, I'm. I can start mine. Um, oh, I was about to say I could do mine. Okay, go ahead. Oh yeah, all right, here we go. Sugar Love. This is Sugar Love by Raheem mm-hmm. Devon, Boy Soul, and the Hamiltons. If you remember Hamiltons from Anthony Hamilton. Him. This is oh, his, his group. Yeah.
I mean, like it was in the car. We were supposed to get a lot of people in our years of being exalted. When we got, I remember Knicks used to hate Larry Johnson until we got him. Grandma, mom. Yeah, he used to. Cook he got in that New four York. point play. He used to cook in New York. He was king of that too. He was a little nasty. He was like people came to New York at the end of their career and used to put up numbers in the nineties. They used to really like Stephon. Stephon used like, to cook in the Knicks. Oakley too. Remember Oakley came to the Knicks at the end of his career, not the no ninety four. He was remember he came here fresh off the Bulls. Remember, he was with the Bulls from the 80s. The cocaine Bulls, right? Yeah, he was in the Bulls yeah, in the 80s yeah, all the way up until they got... I think he... I don't cocaine think he was with them. My CTE <laughs> acting up. He was with them. I think he was with them for the first shift. My CTE acting up. Yeah, I told my right. mom. Hold up, hold up. I'm going to send you the server. Yes, it was. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it. That nigga was like, uh-uh, my CTE acting up. And when you realize that he's like, a wide right receiver. In the fucking, like, the irony, this shit came out. Man, this shit came out right when the, you know, AJ, um, Antonio Brown interview with I, I, Right. I, 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 <laughs> imagine if that nigga says that shit, bro. Like, I, I, I wish that becomes a running joke. In the oh, no. Uh, Antonio I'm Brown really. on I Am Athlete is this Monday. I just said, oh, man. <laughs> right? Like, he's saying he hopes like, he says that. Don't be the don't be the nigga from. from he missed the whole first saying. part. Of that. He missed the whole first part where you you explained exactly. Yeah, you know it's cold too. Like don't be that. Yeah, you know it's cold too, right? Yeah, Pootie Tang is the greatest movie in the world. When you type in black superhero, Pootie Tang comes up. Just let you know. That. Oh, nigga, Pootie Tang. Just like there you know. is a theory that Pootie Tang was like the darkest, most depressing <laughs> movie ever. Yo, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> it might be, but I don't care. I laugh at all those things. Yo, like, when I, laugh at, I, laugh at, I laugh at real dark movies, so that doesn't The be. silent song had me crying. This you nigga know? laughed at Saul. <laughs> That's what I think Ari seen Hostel and he laughed the whole time in the theater. Only time I didn't laugh, oh, no, I didn't watch Yo, it. Yo, I'm not going to front. I almost got kicked out of the movies for laughing at Blood Diamond. Yeah, Brian. Nah, nigga, I was. Where is the diamond? Where is the diamond? You laughed at me. I laughed at him. I'm a star. I'm a star. He was like, "Give us free. Give us free." Nah, nah, nah. The part that had me rolling, bro. When I tell you, I was in tears. I remember this monologue. I remember the. I was on a date and I was sitting next to a girl, dying laughing on this movie. She was just looking at me like, "It's a dude." Yo, I used to call him my blood diamond because because that was it was just a fun date. But Diamond. Anyway, the dude goes like, "Yo, it like just just a scene. You just see like half his face, and he's like, they say the power is in the hands of the people, so we take the hands, <laughs> right?" Yo, the dude's, that nigga. the dude's holding, but that's not the part that had me laughing. The dude's holding somebody's arms down on a, a block and goes, "Long sleeve or short?" And I was <laughs> crying, bro, <laughs> crying like yo, howling, tears is, running down my is, face. And yo, I yo, bro, I was dying laughing. That brother, in any movie, movie he's the rest in, of the movie, I was dying laughing. T I A, this is Africa. Yo, crying. Movie, what the fuck? Leonardo any DiCaprio movie, was in that shit. He was yes. wilding, bro. Nah, I remember because the movie uh, Nas had a song on the soundtrack. I didn't even know about that shit. That movie, had, yo, any, bro. I thought any movie I would, that you told me that movie was, was a comedy, and I wouldn't believe bro. it. Any and you told me that was a comedy. Said. Any movie that he's in that, that he's playing like his native self, he's fucking hilarious. <laughs> like fucking hilarious. Dog. Was he in Hotel Rwanda? I don't think so. But he was in Amistad and that nigga had me crying, bro. <laughs> but um crying. anyways though, man. Yo, wait. I was one of them niggas that laughed in Insidious too. I'm sorry, but I'm weird, bro. I'm a weird ass nigga. I didn't laugh in hostile when it, when it cut that me, me and Gino, who going? Um, I don't mind right. going last. I put, my song, I put my song already in the chat. Oh, you got you did? I got he you. put it in the queue. I got you, God. This nigga think it's Netflix and shit. He put it in the queue. You know, that's, that's how you can do it when you win Spotify. No, oh, fuck Spotify, nigga. No, oh, fuck you, yeah. bro. Fuck, how, Yo, bro. Fuck you. We'll smoke you with that smoke dark you. aesthetic. This nigga said, fuck Spotify and then put that crack pipe up. <laughs> <laughs> like Dean <laughs> Andrews. <laughs> Oh, yes, oh, this is my, my shit too. Now I don't go back. This is my shit. 
Bro, Booty was wilding on that, bro. Son, I'm Booty. telling you, between her and The weekend, I think they should be, like, unsung. Nah, members. bro, listen. No, I'm listen, just saying, they should be unsung Lanes. members of, of Silk Sonic. <laughs> bro, Tory Lanez alone that prom and is better than Dawn FM. I'm not I still got, I, I'm still I'm still I did I did a listen for both of them. I'm still uh, they're both fired. Them. They're both fired, yeah, but Tory Lanez sacrifices the new theme song for fucking WrestleMania, dude. Like bro, I'm dude, like, come on. It's like look, yo, I'll be you real. That's what also don't like. Hold on, just hear me out. I want to say this and just and this is did you like Save Your Tears? I no, listen, Hold listen, on, wait, 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 what album? Sacrifice the song on Don FM. Is the new no, I didn't like that shit. My shit was, I'll tell okay. you right now. I said it in the last one. I, 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 I ain't playing this song. In my I like um I heard you were married. I, I heard you were married. Beautiful. Here we go again, out of time, and don't break my heart. Those are my joints. Now, how how do I make you love me? Is fire. That's just fire. Is there someone else? He that's my shit too. It was, that's my shit too. But, Best friends, beautiful. Very, but, but, very. But listen, yo, listen, listen, listen. listen. <laughs> yeah. Bro, when it's I go friend, to alone that prom, alone that prom. Look, Enchanted Waterfalls, fire, beautiful. beautiful. Pink Dolphin <laughs> Sunset. See, and that's the difference, Gino. Pink I can play Tory album front to back. I can't do that with the weekend album. Yo, I when I say Midnight Interlude, this fucking heat, bro. Yeah, I'm ready. Bro, the I'm gonna have a last comment. I mean, bro, last like, comment. Can we just appreciate both because it's like, come on, it's like, really no, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I don't. I'm hairs. saying, I'm saying, if I'm coming, listening to two albums back to back to back, it's just like, yo, alone that promise, fucking fire. It's a, like, look, one's a that bonfire, one's, one's, one's a campfire. I'm I'm both lighting in the dark. Later. One's a bonfire, one's, and a, one's a campfire, bro. And I'll be real if Tory Lane's about bonfires too much. If, to, if Tory Lane's ain't shoot making, if that whole incident ain't go down, he'd be a lot bigger. Pause right now. This album probably be having like triple the numbers, maybe quadruple the numbers. It'd be Keep killing stream records, right? And, to, and Megan also came out as being a drunk, so I don't know how things are gonna look oh, for her. Court. All right, so that's a bad after, move for her. She just held her party. Go ahead, play that song though. She put out something here by Cali Uchis featuring probably Tyler the Creator and Bootsy Collins. Now, hopefully, it was a porno. Now, nah, probably vomit. Mm. I'm just gonna play this record. <laughs> oh, oh, we could do second. Edit point, edit point. <laughs>
that song is getting added to the playlist. All right, I'm about to throw mine on, man. This is uh, off the Dollar Menu project, uh, Mac Hami and or Ma, is it Mac Hami or Mac Hami? One of those. Please, Mark. Mark, Mark Hami and God Fahim. Uh, this is Rolf, just like this is how it's spelled Rolf Beeler. So it's not Wolf, it's Rolf. Rolf Beeler. You sound like the dude who was pronouncing. Uh, uh, was it a uh, Richard Mill on the West Side joint? Richard Mill. Richard Mill. <laughs> Richard <laughs> Mill. <laughs> Yo. The, this beat is nuts. Nah, this nigga already stupid because <laughs> nigga coming with two only bottles say of that. He nigga, only say nigga, that. Nigga, this nigga play India with two bottles of wine coming in the room. And he shit. only say that because I played. I, I'm on record saying I played plugs I met through my breakup, <laughs> and it helped the nigga. <laughs> Niggas know about that India record. That nigga came in with two bottles of this wine. This is with this was with his recommendation because I was gonna listen to some sad shit. This nigga was like, nigga, go throw some Griselda on. Get yeah. your mind on that. Yeah. <laughs> Plugs I met was out yeah, helping you the too far. <laughs> you <went> too far. <laughs> This nigga was like, nah, nah, nah. My lady love this shit. This we gonna play. We gonna play five to fifty. I'm gonna stroke with a five to fifty. Doom, doom. Oh my god, this is a sick mm -hmm. Negro, bro. On that note, man, we are out of here, bro. <laughs> Get your bars off podcast. Y'all know where to follow us, man. Get your bars off podcast on all streaming sites. Get your bars off network on YouTube. Get your bars off pod on Twitter. Get your bars off brand on Instagram. Follow us at our respective 
Instagrams and all of that such social media platforms. And can I get a two sweet on this joint? We bang, bang. 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 